now and all yours. Okay, well, I, I do like to say the first, as the first thing I do want to announce to everybody that's on here is that uh, we're holding this meeting virtually because of the uh, COVID crisis. And so this is a <laughs> virtual meeting to keep everybody safe. As part of that process, we are uh, recording it. And so everybody is being recorded. That's your warning. And um, at the end of the meeting, we will be posting it on our YouTube channel and uh, so that people can uh, watch the recording if they want. And with that, then uh, we are ready to start. So uh, first item up is approval of the agenda. So do we have any comments on the agenda? And David, I, I guess I just want to ask you, David, I, I, are you on the East Coast? Are you okay with the, the position you are in the, uh, on the agenda? And, you need well, to actually, you know, I was, I was I'm trying to find the, now my screen is frozen. Uh, great. I'm trying to. I'm trying to find the agenda. Um, I, I have a, a, oh, I, no, I don't know what's going on here. No. It's not you, David. It's freezing all across the board. Well, I can't unfreeze my, I, I have a document that I, I can't, oh, here we go. Well, no, we're all frozen. Hmm. That's interesting. I just see you frozen, David. I don't see anyone. Every single, every single person on my screen is frozen. Okay, everybody on my screen. Everybody is everybody's moving except for you, David. All right, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave and come back. That's fine. I'll I will watch for you. I get a notice. All right. Well, how about can we get in a, a, a motion to approve the uh, the agenda? And if we have to move David up earlier because he's on the East Coast, we'll do that. I'll make him a motion. A second by Robert. All those in favor? Raise your hand. All right. Way we go. Perfect. All right. We now have a wonderful secretary in Mandy, and she prepared the minutes and she circulated them, and so everybody's had an opportunity to review them. So, um, do we have any questions or comments on the minutes that Mandy circulated? Well, I just like to say, Mandy, thank you so much. That was an amazing minutes. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I I agree. I agree. So yeah, yeah. I nominated for I nominated for a reason. <laughs> Good job, Lucky. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, do I have a, a motion to approve the uh, the minutes that Mandy circulated? I move to approve. Okay, Mark. Mark moves. You got a second? Mm -hmm. a second. Corla. Okay. All those in favor? Looks like we have all the hands up that I can see. Perfect. All right. Uh, board officer report. So um, I will start uh, with president. And again, I, I think that um, really appreciate all the support of all the board members. And um, I think we got a healthy board. And I think that everybody on the board is participating. And, uh, and that really makes a difference. And um, I also want to thank the community. We have had a significant amount of community uh, input and participation. And so um, I really, it really makes me happy to, to see those two working together. Um, one thing that I want to mention is that, um, and we've got, we've got some good outreach from some of the government agencies. So on Saturday, I believe it's at nine or 10 o'clock, Margaret has the information if people are interested, but nine or 10 o'clock, there is a uh, meet the uh, mayor with Mayor Gloria. And it's for district two, which is our district. And Margaret has circulated that to the board and she could post that again, maybe if she wants. But I would encourage people in district two, if you want to talk to Todd Gloria, I mean, he is a, he's an articulate guy and he, and he knows the issue. So um, think about doing that on Saturday morning. Um, also, I, we're going to talk about this later, but I mean, short-term vacation rentals have been a big issue um, for a long time in, in Point Loma and, and city council can take action on February 23rd. And we're going to talk about that later. So that's a big issue affecting the community. And then, um, just since I'm on the redistricting commission, I just thought I'd give everybody an update, but just so people know, the redistricting commission is moving forward with uh, an anal analyzing the city council districts in the city of San Diego. In that regard though, we we're in the same position as everybody else and that the government has issued a, a notice that the census date, instead of coming out on March uh, 30th of uh, this year, it's gonna come out on September 30th. So it's gonna, everything on the redistricting is going to be delayed by, uh, by six months, but, um, we are trying to get the redistricting going and we're going to be doing public outreach. So if people want to do public outreach and get involved in redistricting, 
you, uh, you should keep your eyes open and, and ask me any questions you have. So that's the end of my report. Uh, David, do you have anything as a uh, vice chair? Well, I'm now back, uh, but I'm back on my phone because I could not get my computer to work. So, um, uh, you know, Fred, I was looking for the final version of the agenda. The agenda I had, which was a Word version that you had sent out last week, uh, I couldn't see where I was even on the agenda. So maybe you, you are, could help me. You are on page two. Page two, you're the first board initiated action item. So we're going to go. We're going to go through all of the. Uh, uh, we're going to go through all of the uh, design review stuff before. Well, typically that's how we, I, I've changed it up because, you know, we have a lot of people from the public. We don't like to make them wait through all our business. All right. but, well, but I know you're on the East Coast and you just had a grandchild. And so congratulations. We're very, very happy oh, for thanks. you. So I'm happy to move you up if you want to go up earlier because of that. Um, just yeah, I, if you don't mind, I would because it's nine o'clock here and it's been a long day already. And uh, uh and I haven't had dinner yet. So, <laughs> okay. Well, I think I it's like, important enough issue, and I understand, and I appreciate you doing that. So, I think I'm going to put you. We'll, we'll do the uh, non-agenda, non-agenda public comment, and we'll do the government reports, and then, and then we'll go right to the elections, and then we'll do. Uh, Sounds topic. good. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Brad, do you have any uh, officer report that you want to give? Uh, no, but thank you. Uh, I did want to say, and I just sent a, a chat to Mandy that I wasn't present last month and I was abstaining from approval of the minutes. Okay. Um, but uh, no, I have nothing to add at this point. Thank you. Got it. Thank you, Brad. I've, I've noted that. All right. And last, last meeting, I skipped over our treasurer. So Corley, do you want to give a treasurer's report so we know how much money we have? Uh, well, you didn't. I just didn't have the number handy. I said it was just the same, but our, uh, our balance is 75781. And again, the only reason we have money, uh, two reasons is because um, we haven't had an election last year and we had a nice donation. And then uh, we can only submit for reimbursement once a year. So that's a whole new uh, procedure. But we have 75781, so we should be able to hold our elections just fine. Uh, Corla, could we recognize the person that made the uh, donation? I think uh, somebody be, makes a donation to deserves recognition. They, they prefer to be anonymous. Okay, that's fine. Okay, and our spectacular secretary, do you have an officer's report or anything you want to add? No, I don't. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right, I do not believe that uh, Tony Kempton's here. So we will go straight to agenda uh, <laughs> public comment. Uh, Corla, do we have any non-agenda public comment? Um, there might be. I, I, I have been emailing uh, someone. Let's see if there's a hand up. Uh, let's see if he's in this meeting. Just give me one second to look at the screen. Um, that person that had registered has not joined the meeting yet. So uh, unless you see someone's hand up, I, I, I don't. All right, well, is there anybody out there that would like to make non-agenda public comment? Now, now would be the time. Fred, this is Andrew Harvey with the Office of Supervisor Vargas. I'd like to just make a quick announcement. Um, you can either, you're, you're gonna be right up next for government reports. You can do that in a government uh, report or you can. Oh, my apologies, I'll wait. Okay, any non-agenda public up comment? All right, seeing none, we're gonna move forward. We got lots of things to do. Andrew, why don't you go up first for government reports then? Awesome, thank you, Fred. So uh, it's, it's great to be back here. Just um, uh, an issue uh, since the last time we were together. So the County Board of Supervisors has put together a framework to make uh, the data with COVID vaccination more transparent. Um, so we're in the early stages of that. Just so we, we know who's vaccinated, we can tr keep track of our communities. Uh, we are really behind with the inclement weather on the East Coast with our vaccinations. So unfortunately, they've had to shut down multiple vaccination sites. It's causing a lot of congestion, traffic, uh, frustration. Uh, the community team is dedicating most of their time to helping with that, um, whether it's getting your first vaccination or finding your second appointment uh, to get that taken care of. So I'm gonna put my information in the chat. More than happy to 
to help out in any way possible and uh, keep this group updated on, on what's going on in terms of COVID vaccination. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Okay, well, Andrew, let me just ask specifically, right? I mean, my son's, uh, right, he's, uh, he's got underlying health conditions. So he would be in the next category that was scheduled to go on March 15th. So, because uh, he's under 65. So, I mean, where, where do we stand on getting vaccines? I mean, it, it's troubling that they're all being held up. Where, where do we stand on getting things, getting back on track? Right now, we're still trying to get all of our most vulnerable. And the next tier looks like our essential workers, um, police officers, um, caretakers without license. Um, and so we're just trying to put everything together. So on the county website, so you're able to, to see all that uh, and just to get an idea of where we're at, because right now it's confusing uh, on the website. Uh, you don't know what the progress is like or who specifically has been successfully vaccinated. And we want um, the communities in every district to, to have an idea. Um, so you, if you have a suggestion or criticism, please feel free to, uh, to let me know because uh, uh, I'm more than happy to pass that on to our policy team. <clears throat> You're looking for criticisms and suggestions. You came to the right place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how about let's go to District Two, Monique? You want to go next? <clears throat> yes. 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 Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for allowing me to join and hosting this. So I want to start first with the um, Voltaire and Freud a stop sign request, uh, since it has been. Um, um, how do we, you guys wrote a letter of support to our office. I want to let you know that we did reach out to city staff to kind of get an update on what the status is like. Um, they are looking back to it. They have not responded to us. So I'm going to be following up at the end of this week um, about that again to see where they are at. Um, they just for some additional information that they did evaluate for stop signs at most of the intersections between Freud and Venice, but most of them did not warrant for any additional stop signs. So we are kind of asking what the alternatives are, where are options um, to move it forward since it was uh, at the request of the community. Um, and I will bring back a report and probably email you guys um, with the latest information once we get that back from city staff. Um, I also want to say that earlier this month, the council president and the mayor hosted a town hall on COVID-19 vaccinations. If you're unable to join um, at that date, they went ahead and recorded it and they placed it on the city's YouTube channel. So it is available for viewing um, on the city's YouTube channel. I'll post it on the chat um, once I'm done giving my report. Vax volunteers are needed at COVID-19 vaccination sites. Uh, Sharp is hosting um, some volunteer opportunities. If you are interested, I'll post the link so you can sign up and um, get, go and volunteer. I think that they are also giving vaccinations to volunteers who are um, volunteering at least two or three times, um, and they do have a process on how you're going to get vaccinated and then how you would receive your second dose as well. Um, that is through SHARP, so that is not with the county or the city, that is through SHARP um, themselves. They just want volunteers I don't, and they have dates, so you could just pick a date and sign up then. <clears throat> the council member also released a 2021 State of the District video. Um, she went ahead and placed it on her uh, Facebook channel, so I'll go ahead and provide the link with you guys if you guys would like to tune in and watch it as well. Um, as you mentioned, transportation <coughs> rentals is going to come on uh, Tuesday, February 23rd. It's going to be a very, very long meeting. Uh, so if you are interested, you can watch it on the city's uh, TV channel or channel 23 on the TV if you have Cox. Um, and I don't know the other channel if you have at and I think it's a different one, channel 22. I'm not sure. So I'll double check, but that is going to be a long meeting. They're going to be discussing the short term vacation um, ordinance. And let me go ahead and quickly go over how that looks, just in case you guys have not had the opportunity to review it. It is going to be 1% um, cap. I believe it's going to have a four tiers. So uh, there is more, I think the slide show is going to be posted. I'll also provide the link if you guys want to review the material. And if there's any questions, feel free to reach out to me or anybody in our office and we'll be 
willing to give you guys um, some more information as well. And then earlier in the month, there was an extension of the eviction moratorium for residential commercial tenants. Um, there have a layout on how you could qualify for protection. You do have to provide uh, written documentations and they will have to respond within 14 days to see if you qualify. And then on February 8th, uh, city council also unanimously approved some amendments to an old city council policy that dated back to 1970 that regulated the distribution of street improvement costs. So this was a uh, dirt alleyways, dirt streets. Uh, usually when somebody wanted to go ahead and make improvements to those streets, it would fall onto the property owner, uh, the budding property owners. But now with this amended proposal, the city council will have the opportunity to prioritize and select which unimproved streets, if any, uh, to include on an annual budget process. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be included on this budget cycle. I'm in the works of getting that information for you guys. So we've been receiving some feedback if you have any other streets that you would like to be added, feel free to share it with our office and we can add it to a list. Are there any questions? Um, yeah, so Monique, I just wanna say on the, on the very last part, I mean, one of the non-agenda co comments we were expecting was a, a person in Point Loma that was very unhappy about his unimproved uh, alleyway. So he, he might, he, he'll, we'll, we'll, we'll send him your way when we hear from him again. Yes, so Does please. anybody else have any uh, questions for Monique? Yes, did, are you going to be around for the, some, the most of the meeting or do you have to leave right away? No, I'll be sticking around. Um, because we are going to be discussing uh, Ocean Beach Planning Board's letter about STDRs with their, and so I'm, sh I'm sure you're aware of that. I don't know if they've sent that yet, but we are going to discuss uh, supporting or not that letter. So that's uh, timely uh, for the February 23rd meeting. Yes, I'll stick around. I'm aware of the Ocean Beach one and also the Pacific Beach did take some uh, positions on that as well. Yeah, so it'd be nice to have you around at this question at that point. Are there any other questions? All right, thank you, Yep. Miller, always good to see you, Miller. Welcome back, good to have you. <laughs> hey, you too. Good evening, folks. It's good to be back to my original planning group. It's very exciting, always. Um, good to see you guys. If it looks like I'm standing, it's because I am. I have a standing desk. I love it. Um, Miller Salton with Senator Atkins office. Good to see you all, as I said. Um, a lot of news coming out of the state. I'm going to try to be brief. Um, yesterday, the legislature and the governor announced $9.6 billion in support for Californians facing, as we know, unprecedented financial hardship due to COVID. Um, it's a series of 11 bills that'll be voted on by the legislature on February 22nd and signed by the governor shortly thereafter. Um, our budget forecast ended up improving quite a lot than what we thought and what we were told it was going to look like uh, near the beginning of the pandemic. And then our rainy day fund, which is well known, um, has allowed California to take these actions. So this includes direct relief to California households that have been disproportionately impacted by the economic devastation of the recession due to COVID. Uh, those with incomes below $30,000 and those excluded from the federal stimulus will receive a one-time payment of $600 from the state of California. That's expected to go out to about 5.7 million hardworking folks in our state. And that'll include, among other groups, 1.2 million very low income elderly, blind and disabled indiv individuals to help them pay with their, pay their, for their basic need, needs, food and shelter. Um, an additional $2.6 billion in grants for grants of up to $25,000 <coughs> and allocated for small businesses and nonprofits to help them overcome economic challenges created by the pandemic. $2 billion in tax cuts for small businesses are planned, um, allowing folks to deduct up to $150,000 in expenses paid for using PPP, Paycheck Protection Program. Um, provides $115 million in fee reductions, so waiving fees for two years for small businesses and heavily impacted services, including restaurants and bars and uh, barbering and cosmetology businesses. The emergency action includes additional funding for cow works, child care, college students, food and diaper banks, temporary shelter, aid to agricultural workers who may have been exposed to COVID, 
and restores the program cuts from the 2020-2021, our last budget, including <laughs> restoring cuts to California State University and the University of California. So there's a lot there. Uh, COVID-19 obviously has had a big effect on our housing and affordable housing supply, which was already an issue. Um, and again, has a Senate housing package. I'm sure we'll be discussing that like we did last year. Um, the Senator has two bills in that package. She's also authoring SB1 that will help local communities fight sea level rise. And at the beginning of the month, another uh, big action was taken that extended the eviction moratorium to June 30 of 2021. And you're probably hearing all different levels of government, all four levels of our government are doing different things around the eviction moratorium. So at the state, it's extended to June 30 of 2021 and it extends the current requirement that tenants pay 25% per month by the end of the, of the moratorium. Um, but it also releases just over two and a half billion dollars from the federal government to go towards unpaid rent. So that will be an option to either pay landlords 80% of missed rent if they forgive 20% or 25% of missed rent. And it will prioritize households with the highest need. As always, here to help with any state related issue, we've been doing quite a lot of work on unemployment uh, cases probably helped around 1,400 people so far in the last year. Um, and that's all I have. Thanks okay. for sticking through the long report. Do we have any questions for Miller? I don't see any questions. I'm just going to make my comment, Miller, which is <clears throat> I like that, they, that, that, that you guys are on that rent relief. I mean, obviously, there's people that need rent relief, but, you know, if you own a uh, an apartment you need to get <clears throat> some payment too. So, so some kind of compromise where, where the, the, the owners can get a little bit of a payment too. I think that's, that seems like a decent uh, compromise. So just yeah. minute. Thanks, Fred. Man, you guys let me get off easy. You usually get more questions than this. They're anxious to talk about the election. Yeah. <laughs> Count your blessings. <laughs> What's that? Count your blessings. Oh, yeah. Uh, and just a, just a comment, if I may. Um, I used to be the liaison for this group for Midway Planning Group, and I was always impressed. I think it was because their meetings were during the day about how many different representatives' offices sent uh, people to the meetings to uh, to make updates and everything. And I'm 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 grateful for the increased number of such presentations that we get here monthly. Now um, it seems like this this crew. Uh, is is here? They're attentive, and they're talking to us. And 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 I I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that they're to the time. I mean, Miller may be wearing sweatpants underneath there somewhere and, and relaxing oh. somewhat at home, but he but he's got it. But he's got an appointment with us, and I'm happy that uh, that all all of the uh, people making presentations from the local elected's office has uh, uh, made their time available to us and continue to do so. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Well, Jim I, I'm just going to echo that. It's re, we, re, we do really appreciate it. It's great for the board, but it's also great for the community. And it's a lot of information. Lucky and I talked about this after the last meeting. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, we're encouraging people and I'm glad they're participating. With that, since we just mentioned Midway, why don't we go to DK and, and see if there's any update from, uh, from, Mid, from Midway? Uh, yeah, good evening. Thanks as always for having me. Um, Actually, so we always have our meetings just the day before you all. So it's nice to kind of do the, the double dip while everything's fresh. Uh, at our meeting yesterday, we also uh, discussed the, the LB planning group's letter um, regarding short-term vacation rentals. We talked about our elections as well. And uh, there was a conversation that we had had previously about potentially um, using the sports arena site as a vaccination site as well. Obviously, the, the, the infrastructure there for driving the parking lot is massive. Um, so the takeaway from, from that action item yesterday was for us to sort of look to work with the uh, county to see if there is anything that, that we can do as a planning group to, to facilitate that. I don't know that we can, but that was one of the things that came up uh, on our most recent meeting. Outside of that, um, I think you all know I'm, I'm part of the Sports Arena Redevelopment Communities Advisory Board. Uh, so that group meets every other month. We had our most recent meeting about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago and they gave us some updates on their project. Uh, one of the big things that we came away from that is that the principal uh, sort of 
front person, Zach Adams, who was working on that project throughout the RFP and, and, and the whole height limit campaign thing. He's no longer with Brookfield. So there, there's a replacement gentleman and I can find his uh, information and throw it in the chat if you guys are interested. But Zach Adams himself is no longer with Brookfield. The project itself is still going through um, basically some high level uh, engineering analysis uh, regarding the actual surface of the arena and, and, the, and the ground, the underlying ground surface that's underneath there. Uh, as they start to really hone in on what it is specifically that they can build. So all that analysis is being done now. My understanding is that they're still in negotiations with the city on the final term sheet, uh, but that, that the loose terms have been agreed and, and hopefully within the next week, two weeks, we should see some, um, some movement on, on just, even just the timeline and the updates for when that process is going forward. Um, other than that, not a ton going on. Happy to take any questions if anyone has them. Obviously, the sand egg navbar thing is continuing to rumble on, but I don't have anything new on that front at the moment. Yeah, I'll just make the comment. I mean, the sports arena sounds like an intriguing site for the, the vaccinations. I don't know if you can do that or whether Andrew can help you, but I, being a Padre fan, I, I, I heard that the uh, Padre Petro Park is going to shut down on April 1st when baseball starts. So that's uh, that's good for baseball, but bad for vaccination. So so another site might yeah, be so that yeah that might be a, a good time to transition. You know, I know that they 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 call it the super site. We were sort of looking to steer clear of being a super site, but <laughs> the fact of the matter is, um, you know, we've got that infrastructure and, and it it does belong to the city of San Diego. So um, to the best of the city's ability to you know that's kind of within their own interest to to accelerate the the rollout of this vaccine. Okay. Well, thank you, DK. All right, Tracy, we'll ask about Ocean Beach. I, I think we're probably going to hold off on short term. First, oh, do you have okay. another, do you, any other questions for DK? First, go ahead, go, Carla. Yeah, I do. Um, did you guys take a stance on the OB letter? We, uh, as a group, opted not to take a stance on the letter. Um, primary, well, three different reasons. Primarily uh, because this was the first time that our group had really kind of dug in to the topic and the letter had already been sent to uh, council. And the meeting at which full council is hearing this is, is in five or six days. So those were sort of the, the high level reasons. And then also, um, frankly, we don't, like I said, we've not really engaged on the short-term rental issue. We, we don't have enough housing, frankly, in Midway to, to have it warrant be something that has come up on our radar since this ordinance has been rumbling around these next few months, these last few months, I should say. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for DK? All right, Tracy, you're up for Ocean Beach. Ocean Beach. Um, so, <laughs> so the only thing that we really have going on right now is um, the STVR letter, um, obviously, but Andrea is going to cover all of that later. Um, but what I would like to do is actually put out a call. If, um, if you know anyone who lives in the Ocean Beach planning area and has attended at least one of our meetings, um, and would be interested in running for our board, now would be a great time to um, put in an application for a write-in candidate. Um, the reason why I'm asking is because we actually have three of our districts, District 1, District 7, and at our, our at-large district that do not have any candidates running this time. So um, District 1 would be the furthest north so the war zone, um, District 7 would actually be the furthest south. And the at-large, of course, would be um, anybody, in the whole area. So we don't have any candidates running for the seat this, this year in those three districts. And um, it would be really great to get some write-in candidates. Um, unfortunately, our rules say that you must have attended at least one meeting within the last 12 months. But if you have, uh, if you have, and you're interested in being on the the planning board, or you you know anybody who lives in Ocean Beach and who is interested, um, please send them our way because we'd love to to have some writing candidates on the ballot. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, our our elections are March third, so if you're if you know anybody who's interested, um, they have to have an application in by March second. Okay. Okay. Any Thank questions you. for Tracy? All right. I think I've hit all the government uh, and and planning boards. Any is there anybody I missed out there? <clears throat> all right. Seeing none. 
we are going to move down to <clears throat> planning board initiated action item number one, which is the two 2021 election. And I'm going to turn it over to the election chair. Uh, <clears throat> no, I, I, Fred, yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to rise to a point of order. Okay. <clears throat> pertaining to the integrity of uh, the election. And I'd ask uh, Margaret if she could help me possibly with a screenshot. <clears throat> I don't see Margaret there. Anyway, uh, Margaret was going to uh, <clears throat> give me a- I'm here, what do you need? I Sorry. I need a screenshot, Margaret, if you can- I had to go to the bathroom, to be honest. No, that's okay. fair enough. <laughs> So what do I'm sorry, guys? What are we? I, I'm asking you to help me with a screen a screenshot uh, uh, that uh, I believe you might be able to provide some documentation for me. Of what? I believe you might be able to provide some documentation for me with a screenshot. Uh, of what? <laughs> it's a screenshot what? of uh, uh, a document that uh, uh, that uh, came out of uh, our. Um, meeting uh, uh, when we had the meeting for the uh, election committee uh, uh, something uh, uh, was sent that uh, uh, I believe you members of the committee received and I would like you to share that oh okay sorry I I'm out of the loop okay but yeah I, I should have been specific I, okay. I don't have the skill set to do that if you would help me with that please sure yeah, we just uh, we finished with the government reports and we were moving to elections and then luck, luck Oh, luck. sorry. I'm sorry. Thank but, you. Well, well, wait. This is, but this sounds like it's on the topic of elections. It is on the topic. Yeah. Is there something? Somebody it's, about the back it, it's, it's, a point, it's a point of order and it comes before anything else. And so, what's the point? Okay. So I, I'm, I'm rising to a point of order on this and it, and it, it, if you're, if you're, now aware of what I was talking about specifically, Margaret, if you could help me with that. Please. I'll help you, sure, no problem. I just I can't figure out who that is. Yeah, okay, th this stuff. Oh, come on. If you could get to the bottom of it, please. Oh, come on. Really? Yes. Oh, jeez. Okay. Let's go to the bottom oh, of you it. You know, guys, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. Yeah. Yeah, well. Don't uh, have time if, for that. Uh, if you look at the okay. section to the end of the paragraph, it says, uh, uh, it's written uh, and it's I particularly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. No. So I don't, okay, Lucky, I, I don't under, let's go, let's go through the election procedures and then if there's something after the election procedures that you want to raise in this regard, then we can- No, point of order comes before any of that. For the record, I didn't shut that down, Lucky. You asked me to share and I shared it, but I didn't shut that down. I did, because I think it's out of order at this point. Uh, well, I'm sorry, but you don't get to determine that, Corla. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to, as a chair, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that, you know, we're gonna reserve that point of order until after we discuss the election procedures. Uh, so, well, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't Fred, I would like to join at this point on this point of order that I think it goes to the integrity of the election committee. Do you guys want to have an election right. or not? That's that that's right. what we're down to. And David's on limited and time. Here, okay, lucky. Okay, so, so, here's my point right, of order, right, 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 right. Lucky. Here's my point of order for you. You have no point of order. After I've called point of order, I have I have the floor. I have not stand down, lucky. I'm gonna resign. Understand that I have not relinquished the floor. Hey, hey, hey. Mr. Chair, right. you have to assert no. yourself here under Robert's rule. I am leaving. Let, no, David, don't resign. We're going to Goodbye. David. We're going to move to David and we're going to go to the election procedures. And then Th we will this is a total breach of Robert's rules, Mr. Chair. And I want to point mm -hmm. that out to you. Robert's rules is very clear uh, on what, how, when, once a point of order like this is okay. called, future business is stopped at that point. Uh, it's, that's, it's so, that's so, no, so, no, so noted, Lucky. I appreciate I appreciate you raising that, but we're going to proceed forward. Okay, okay. Uh, going forward in this meeting is totally against Robert's rules of order. Going forward, and uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I I think that's very inappropriate for you to support that type of thing. You're jeopardizing this meeting's validity going forward by ignoring Robert's rules, which is what our uh, Bible is and how these it's meetings. Not, it's not our Bible. Our bylaws are, our by, are, are more of our bi Bible, but 
I, I'm not ignoring them. I've taken your your objection under consideration, and I'm I'm moving on. I'm not precluding you from raising it <laughs> later, but I think we need to go through the election procedures in a logical order, and and you will you will get your opportunity to speak. No, I disagree with that because I understand the people that, who are going to be speaking are, are are the exact same people that the comment is directed towards. And to allow it to go forward when those are the people who are jeopardizing the integrity of the election is, uh, uh, if I may say, Mr. Chair, an error. Well, let's, let's hear the election procedures, the report of the election committee, and then if you want to make a motion to disband the election committee and not have an election, then... Then, and you know, then we will disband the whole entire planning board. If we don't have an election, then there will be no planning board. We will have to disband. So, uh, don't, Wait, don't, that's Mr. 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 Chairman, Mr. Chairman. I don't think that Lucky has proposed any motion. Uh, I think this goes to the integrity of a member of the election committee and whether they have the impartiality to participate. Okay, well, let, let's let's hear the report of the election committee first and then we will deal with that. Margaret, is that, is that okay with you, Margaret, or do you wanna make a comment? I was gonna ask that we do that since we're in that section <laughs> and everyone just calm down. Yes. Okay. All right. I, I, I still maintain my objections, but please proceed. Okay, I'd be so noted. All right, David, you are the chair and you have you have the floor for the election committee. Thank you. So the election committee had a meeting last Friday on the 12th of February. I thought it was a very successful meeting. Um, every number of participants, including members of the committee and those who are not members of the committee, members of the public and other members of our board. And uh, the result of that was uh, the preparation of a plan. That plan uh, will require us uh, to, by motion tonight, uh, suspend our bylaws with respect to how we conduct our elections, uh, to suspend them uh, in light of uh, the uh, ongoing health crisis, uh, state of emergency declared at various different levels of government, and the direction that we've received from the city with respect to how we can conduct an election. And uh, the suspension of the bylaws will allow us to conduct an election in a manner which is inconsistent with the bylaws. And that uh, we came up with a process for doing that. And we're here, or I'm here on behalf of the committee to recommend that process to the board and to ask the board's approval of that process going forward so we can conduct an election on March 18th, I think it is. And, uh, and then um, have hopefully the results of that election at that time and seat a new fully constituted board um, by the uh, uh, election in April. And so the procedure that we came up with was largely one that would be done um, online and then uh, uh, in person, but without personal contact. And in essence, what we will do is we will post applications uh, for, for candidacy uh, online uh, on our website and anybody who wants to be a candidate, including those people who were candidates last time, uh, they'll need to reapply. That's uh, something that we have uh, decided as a committee was appropriate. Uh, ask them to reapply. Uh, I've already received one application, a reapplication from last year already. Another arrived in my inbox to, from somebody I don't believe was a candidate last year. And uh, they will submit their applications uh, to uh, me, uh, and I'll forward it to the board. Um, they'll come to my uh, email address. Hold on just a second. Um, they'll come to my email address, and um, uh, and they'll be vetted, which they've been vetted in the past by the election committee to determine that anybody who is applying is eligible and meets the candidacy requirements, including having attended a, a prior You're kind of breaking up, David. I don't know if that's ever happened to everybody else. Now you're gone, okay. Um, he's been in and out, there he is, he's back. Temporarily. Um, been breaking up, David. So my apologies, the cable, the, uh, the Wi-Fi here. Yeah, I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi here is unstable. I'm doing my best. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 I can hear you. You're good now. You can hear me. 
I can hear anybody else except you. <laughs> yes. All right, great. Um, so we'll have a can't, can't yeah, okay. Uh, we'll have a candidates forum on the uh, uh, 4th of March. Uh, it'll be a virtual Zoom type uh, candidates and each of the candidates uh, who has a, a, a filed an application that's been approved will be invited to attend. And it'll be a typical similar kind of uh, candidates forum as we've had in the past, except it'll be yes. virtual and online uh, on a Zoom call. Um, the, uh, we also agreed that uh, under the circumstances, uh, given what I'll go to in just a minute, which is uh, sort of the difficulty in, in validating or verifying the, uh, the eligibility of voters as well as the eligibility of candidates, a little bit less difficult because there are fewer of them. Uh, we will not have any write-in candidates. So Tracy and Ocean Beach, we aren't going to have any write-in candidates in the election that we're going to hold in March. Again, this is approved by the uh, by the board. The voting then will take place uh, in uh, the following manner. Uh, there'll be a packet that'll be available on our website to all potential voters. And that packet will basically consist of two pieces. Uh, one is a ballot. And the other is a, call it what you will, a registration. And it will basically be a self vacation by a voter that they are, uh, that they are an eligible voter uh, under the terms of our bylaws in order to describe on the sheet what makes somebody eligible to the district, uh, you know, the normal, the normal things. Um, and, uh, and they will submit their ballot and the statement of eligibility, whatever we're gonna call it, we haven't written it up yet, but a registration form of some kind. They'll submit those together. And that submission will either be by mail, it'll be mailed to the PO box, or it can be delivered to a drop box that we're currently planning to have at the library. In addition to being able to access the ballot and the registration statement online on our website, for those people who don't have either access to the internet or don't have printers and can't print uh, uh, a, a ballot and a registration form, we will have those available for uh, people to come to the library and fill it out at the library. They'll either be able to get it and take it back to their car and fill it out, or um, they'll be able to take it and come back later uh, and, and, and drop it off. But there will be forms available for those, peop those people who either don't have access to a printer or access to the internet to be able to download the, uh, the form. We went to great lengths and talked a lot about different sorts of higher technology sorts of mechanisms for You're uh, frozen, David. We'll see if he comes back here. Yeah, he's been in and out a couple times. Um, I don't know if he can hotspot off his phone. I had to do that when I was in Utah. I think he just left and he'll he'll pop back, he'll rejoin. He'll pop back, okay. He's done that several times. Uh, would you like me to share that? Uh, He's yeah, why don't you share that the sheet that describes what the, the yeah, and I'm, I'm my apologies. I'm going to think, did you let me in, Carla? Oh, you're, Carla you're, okay. in, you're in, David. I'm going to try to share that uh, the notes from the, the notes that I have. I'll try to share that. Am I on twice? You cut, now? you cut out it when you were saying that you considered some higher technology yeah. that, uh, yeah. that, <laughs> oh, wait, right, that, that is. Um, so we tr we considered some. I think am I on twice now, Carla? Carla, uh, I, oh, it called it I don't. Know. It doesn't matter. You're fine. Okay, fine. You're good. Fine. All right. So um, we considered some alternatives, uh, like uh, you know, online voting or uh, using uh, different types of forms to fill out PDF fillable forms and things of that nature. And we decided that uh, the overriding uh, principle that we were going to apply was to keep it simple as simple as possible. Now, Ocean Beach, as Tracy will attest, has a much more elaborate sort of a, of a plan. Um, and I think it's great. And they've thought a lot about it and been planning on it for a long time. And, um, and it sounds like they've got a, 
a, a plan that's going to work great and it's a lot more sophisticated than, our, than ours is. Ours is going to be very much sort of old school, but I think it's going to be something that we know we can do as opposed to something that we try and they fail at. Um, so I think the idea of keeping it simple is also keeping it reliable and keeping it um, likely to actually be successful in its execution. So that was the reason we decided to go sort of old school with paper uh, and, and, and so forth. Um, and then the issue with respect to the validation, you know, one of the, the highest touch components of our, of our voting is when people come in to uh, prove that they are uh, eligible voters and, um, uh, and they have to provide a copy of their driver's license or a utility bill or something else that demonstrates their eligibility and they speak to somebody and there's a lot of interaction and we think that it's best if none of that happens. So in addition to being simple, we're also going to be very dependent upon people's good faith and honesty and we're going to just ask people to verify uh, themselves that they are eligible. You know, frankly, it's harder to vote in our elections than it is to vote in the state election in this state. Uh, you don't have to prove who you are or anything really other than you just go in and sign a form when you go to the polls. So we're going to have something that's probably even a little bit more uh, uh, integral or, or, or higher integrity than, uh, than a, a state run election in that sense. So, um, so hopefully it will work. And then, um, and so there'll be again, vote by mail or a, a drop a, a drop box at the, uh, at the library. Uh, and we've identified times between three and 6 p.m. on the, uh, on the 18th of March uh, to drop your, uh, um, drop your ballot in the mail, excuse me, drop your ballot at the library. And if you're gonna drop it in the mail, postmarks won't mean anything. If they are not received by, uh, you know, the end of the day uh, on the 18th, by the time that we start counting votes, um, those votes are not going to get counted if, whenever they, regardless of when they arrive after that, regardless of when they were posted. If they don't arrive by the 18th, they are not going to get counted. So and we're going to make that very clear. Wh where are they mailing the uh, ballots to? Is that to the planning board? Uh, to the planning board PO box. And have you talked to Brad? Brad's my uh, go-to guy to pick stuff up there, and he's not in the election, so he would be a good neutral person. Yeah, he, we haven't discussed it, um, and uh, I didn't know that. I was wondering who actually had the key and went to the mailbox, but uh, we'll, I'll talk to Brad, and we'll figure that out. We'll there is no key. You just there is no in. key? You just go in and ask for 549 and they hand it to you. I don't know how big it is. Uh, I mean, they, they just kind of stick stuff on off to the side because we get a lot of big packets. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think you would forewarn them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I probably need to forewarn them that somebody other than you is going to come in and ask for it. So <laughs> either we, way, we can we can we can figure that out offline. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of the, the procedure for identifying candidates, validating candidates, validating voters, casting ballots. And then, um, you know, we're going to try to do it pretty much the same way we've done it in the past um, in terms of the counting of the ballots. And we're going to count them on election night, and we're going to hopefully have a result on election night. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is we have 11 spots available in this election out of our 15 we'll have 11, can or, or 11 spots available. It's possible we won't get 11 candidates uh, or we'll get just 11 candidates. And if that's the case, we aren't gonna have an election at all. And those 11 candidates who are eligible by the time, and we'll need to come up with a, a date by which we have to uh, um, identify uh, a deadline for candidate qualification, which we, that was one of the things we did not discuss at the meeting. Um, but once we've got our candidates and there are no more candidates, and if there are 11 or fewer, those 11 are going to get elected. Uh, just hey, by I, I had a question I forgot to ask at the meeting. Go ahead, uh, let, me finish up, let me finish up, Lucky, and then we'll take yes, questions. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, thank you. Thanks. Um, and, uh, and, if, uh, and if we have that situation, because the other thing, the point of it is that of those 11 seats, Five of them will have three years, okay. two, five of them will have two years, and one of them will have one year. Now, one candidate we know of for sure, which is Don Severance, 
he would be a candidate normally for a three-year term, except that by virtue of the fact that he served a year as an as an acting member or an interim member, his eligibility expires after two more years. And so he really wouldn't be eligible for a three-year term. And so he would take a two-year term, even if he had won enough votes in an election um, to, uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but in an election, if he had won enough votes to get the three-year term, he'd still take the two. If we're in a situation where Don's one of 11 candidates and only 11 candidates, Don will take a, a two-year term. All the other candidates' terms will be determined by a draw of lots or from a hat or some such you know, random mechanism like that. If we have an election, then we'll do as we have in the past. The highest vote getter will get the longest term and we'll just move down the that way. So um, you know, by the time we get to the, um, uh, the 11th person, that person will serve the one-year term. Uh, again, if Don is a, as I told him last week, I was sure he would be in the top five, um, that would put him in this, one of the second spots and one of the people who would otherwise would have gotten a two-year spot will get a third year, three-year spot. So that's how we'd allocate the, uh, the spots as the election um, is, uh, as the votes are counted and the uh, results are known. And we'll hopefully have that happen on the 18th as well. And, uh, and then we'll be able to announce the results at the meeting on the 18th. And, uh, and then those new board members will be seated at the meeting in April. So we're gonna try to do it sort of as close as we can to the way we've done it in the past. The only difference is we're minimizing any sort of individual contact as much, uh, minimize as much um, uh, opportunity for any kind of uh, a, a personal spread of, of anything and, uh, and do it in as uh, uh, honest and faithful uh, a way as we possibly can under the circumstances. So that was what we came up with at the meeting on the 12th. I'd welcome any other member of the committee to tell me where I've gone astray, which is entirely possible. So uh, David, did, did the committee vote on those procedures? It, we did and it was unanimous. And that, and how many, how many people were on the committee? Uh, we'll see if the committee is comprised of uh, myself, uh, Jim Hare, Margaret Verissimo, and Paul Grimes as a non-board member member of the election committee. Okay. So those four people. And it was a unanimous vote in favor. And I would say that if everybody who was attending the meeting had a vote, it would have been unanimous among them. That was my sense. Okay. It was a consensus in my in my opinion. Was that no um, I have had this uh, review posted as a screen share. Has everyone had a chance to read that and I can stop sharing? And yeah, I think you can stop sharing that, uh, Mark. I mean, uh, Carla, please. And then before I go, Don, before we, I'm going to ask questions, but I'm going to go to, I'm going to let Margaret or Jim or anybody who's on the committee wants to speak. So Margaret, you're on the committee. So why don't you go ahead and comment and add first. Uh, we spent a lot of time as committee and we opened up the forum to community members that were actually people that were that are running um, that were able to attend, which was really nice to express concerns. So I just want to share that we listened and and really involved the community, which I thought was nice for the first time. I mean, keep in mind, this is really tough. It's not easy on anyone. It's it's on the new norm. So we're doing our best to like take suggestions from the community. We're like a four man band here, um, you know, trying to make the best decision for the election. So it really does help that if you have an issue with what we voted on, speak up now because at the end of the day, it is an ultimate board decision on how this election is going to be run. So don't sit silent and, and complain after the fact, after decisions have been made, because the committee, the election committee seriously did take some time and open up the doors for the community to provide feedback, which I thought was pretty cool and nice. So there were a couple people there. So we did listen and take their suggestions into consideration when we did vote, make the final vote. So I wanted to make sure that that was clear for the record, that it wasn't just Jim, myself, and David, you know, and and um, Paul, you know, voting unanimously without listening to the community. The community had a chance to speak up and also candidates, and that's how our decision was based. Okay, thank you. Jim, as a committee member, did you want to add anything before we open it up to questions? You're on, you're on mute, Jim. 
uh, that that the document that was posted was an iterative process. We put it on the screen and it was added to and edited as we went. So not only were the concepts shared, but they were shared in writing uh, in the same fashion that this board has seen them. So uh, I think I thought the process was 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 very good. Okay. All right. So, uh, um, if I, Fred, if I could, I'm just sure. uh, trying to move this thing along. I'm going to make a motion to adopt the plan that the election committee. Uh, approved at their meeting on the 12th. I do have procedural questions, sir. What about public comment? We, we're going oh, to. I, I, can, I can make a motion anytime I want to make a motion, and I'm making a motion. So, David, David's made a motion. Do we have a second for the motion? Uh, Hold would, on. You can't. Wait a minute. Would this motion include. I make a motion without having public comment because you let the speak first and you didn't let no, the public Margaret, speak. Margaret, the, so you can't the just public make a comment, the public on. comment is a. Yeah. Hold on a second. Uh, I'll show you Robert's rules that you cannot do that. We can. I think we can make the motion, and then we can have public comment on the motion. Exactly. Can, right. uh, yeah. When, you, when can the board the member be recognized? Are you making? No. Excuse me. First, I'll be first. Can you? Are you making the motion, David, to um, uh, approve the procedure, and as well as I want to be sure that we suspend those portions of the bylaws? Is that all inclusive in that motion? What was on the screen, basically. Okay, that, perfect. Uh, that is on the, which included that. Okay, so David's made a motion. Do we have a second for the motion? I'll second it. All right, Corla has seconded. Okay, now we are gonna open it up for comment, but I, I am gonna start with the board. Don, you have a question, so I, let's go I to had, that first. Yeah, I had three procedural questions. Uh, maybe I misheard David, but did you say people could vote online? No. So not that's that's out. Okay, that's out. Uh, you listed the election committee members. You didn't mention James. Was that just an oversight? I did. Jim Hare. How mentioned. many? How many members are on the committee? Four. Could you name the four, please? Myself, Margaret, Jim, and Paul Grimes. Thank you. And then a, a, my other question is, uh, where are the votes going to be counted because probably the library won't be open. I haven't figured that one out yet. I was going to offer, um, I know that we can have space in the Park Point Loma, the pool area. We have a picnic area that's covered that we could possibly have as a, you know, an area for you to vote and it has ample amount of space. No, we're not going to vote there, but we could possibly count there. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's what I meant. Thank you, David. Uh, I was thinking, I was thinking that we could, um, First of all, we might want to try to figure out a way to count uh, without being present in person, but I suppose that's going to be a lift too high. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, and Mandy, it may be, we may take you up on that to find mm -hmm. a uh, somewhere we can do it. Um, and then, and then another concern that I have, the again, the question, Don, is, is to be determined. Okay. And, and another question I have is regarding um, the proof of residency, you know, being that we are socially distanced and people are dropping off and using different mechanisms to drop off their ballots. Um, I'd like to see them show proof because I mean, I, anyone can sign and, 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 you know, fill out an affidavit, but if, is there an area potentially for on that form to have, Hey, this is where you would, you know, attach a copy, a photocopy or a scanned copy of, uh, you know, a utility bill or something that would verify that they are an eligible voter for our boundary. Well, we, we talked about all of that. It's, those are all uh, perfectly good ideas, but we, ex we have a kind of a, I thought a consensus concern about issues involving uh, privacy and um, uh, identity theft and concerns about having information like that created in sort of a permanent fashion. It's one thing when you go up to somebody at a table and show them your driver's license or your utility bill, they look at it and then that's it. They don't take a copy of it. There's no permanent recording of it. Um, it's when you do, do do something like that, that it causes concerns. I don't want us as an organization to be um, somehow criticized that we allowed information, private information like that to get out. Um, obviously we could do a lot of things to prevent that, but, um, you know, I just think it's, I think it would be a mistake uh, for us to uh, require any sort of written evidence. I'm confident guess, enough, yeah, I'm confident enough that, you know, if, if I, the point I made at the meeting was, 
if this was something other than a planning board of volunteers who are purely advisors to the city and don't have any legal authority, if we were something other than that, I might think that we might want to have a higher standard, a higher bar to clear in order to test your uh, uh, eligibility, but we're not. And I think we can rely on the good faith and uh, honesty of our fellow uh, community members to, uh, to not vote uh, if they shouldn't be. In that regard, David, I, I just want to say as being the election chair for the last two elections, I would say about 99% of the people that showed up had proof of residency and, um, and were, were residents. And, and the 1% that did show up that didn't have it, I think they probably would have been eligible too if they would have just brought it. But nice. so I think it's a relatively small risk, but just given this thing. And then, uh, uh, oh, sorry. And then just my second concern is with the, the mailing, you know, I guess as long as we're clear with letting people know that there is a deadline for that date, we're not gonna take the postmark, just being clear on that, that there's not um, any confusion because as of late, the postal service just has not been as um, uh, dependable. And so that's yeah. the concern that I have. Yeah, no, we, we, we recognize that and we'll make sure that whatever the documentation is that we, uh, uh, it looks to me like maybe I've lost you all completely. No, you're good. No, you're, here, you're good. Oh, weird. Okay. Um, all right, all Mark, see, Mark all you I got a question me. for David? All I can see is yeah. me and my stuff. Oh, I see what's going on here. Okay, there we go. Okay, good. All right, hey, um, I would suggest that we do add into that the candidate's qualification date, and I would suggest maybe the end of the Zoom candidates forum as the drop dead for qualifying. And at that point, we'll know how many candidates there, there are, and there's no more after that. That's a great idea. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd modify my motion to include that that the deadline for candidate ver uh, verification, submission of application and verification would be the end of the Zoom uh, candidates meeting on the 4th of March. Yeah. yeah, we changed that a couple of years ago because the candidates were coming in at the last minute before election and it's too hard to verify. So we have recently instituted a cutoff time um, for that as well. So that's a really good suggestion. So Carla, you, uh, you seconded my motion. Will you would, uh, accept yeah. that modification? Thanks. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other board members that have questions? Lucky, you wanted to ask a question. Do you want to? Do you have anything you want to ask? Uh, are you, I, I'm sorry. Are we circling back to my original? Uh, are we there yet? Well, I guess we're we're doing the procedures right then. Maybe we should stick to the procedures now. Do you have any questions about the procedures? No. The only the only question I had was I'm I, I have some concerns about the uh, uh, variability or uh, of that. So. Uh, does that does that affect your ability to to be able to vote on the procedures? Uh, yes, I will, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear that. We say it again, please, Fred. I just want to I want to know whether you need to discuss that issue before you can decide to vote on these on the procedures that David has outlined. Well, it goes to the integrity of uh, of uh, the group that put the procedures together. So I guess the answer would be yes. Okay. Well, then maybe now is the time for you to raise your issue to say before. Lucky, let, Lucky let me ask you a question. Is your concern about the, the, the process that led to the creation of the process that we're voting on, or are you concerned about the integrity of somebody on the committee when it comes to the, 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 the voting and the, the, the counting of votes? Uh, David, that was just way too complex for me. So uh, let's right. go. go ahead. You just do your thing. Yeah. Right. What, uh, what's your concern, Lucky? Uh, Don, uh, did you have I, I do have a question. Uh, Fred, I can't vote on this motion uh, before we take up the issue of the integrity of an election board member. Okay, well then, let now. So then, now's the time. Then that, now's the time. Could, uh, Margaret, could you go back to that screen share, please? I'm willing to read the that what was posted to the public and uh, the entire meeting. Oh, I can, you want me to read it in my own voice? No, I've got it here. I can read it myself, but uh, okay. there it is. So uh, okay. what, we're, what we're looking at is um, uh, something that was posted at our meeting, our uh, uh, meeting and 
the, the last uh, two comments, uh, paragraphs. One, it's it's an individual who's uh, is going on about something. But the end, he says, uh, uh, I ask particularly that you not vote to reelect Lucky Morrison, who has been openly hostile to community members of the PCP, the, who ha have expertise in land use law, planning and architecture, in spite of their ability to assist the board in understanding the process data and regulatory standards involved in the PCP business. Uh, not vote to reelect Don Severance, who has consistently, and then nothing goes on after that. And I got to tell you, I'm, I'm pretty thick-skinned. That, that's okay, Mark. I'm pretty thick-skinned. That uh, the, the comments are, uh, of course, I, I take a great deal of issue with them, but uh, everybody has uh, opinions on type of things like that. And the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the comments about myself, uh, uh, I'll defend in another venue sometime. It's uh, it's a, it's basically a, a resident versus a planner type of attitude on approach on how to do some of that stuff. And so, yeah. so, uh, uh, but this I, I find particularly egregious because it come, it came from uh, Jim Hare, who is a sitting member of the, uh, uh, the election committee. Now, it, it, Jim, Jim and all, uh, may well be in that room or wherever it is counting votes. And I have no confidence after, particularly after such a strongly worded uh, comment about myself and whatever was gonna be said about Don, but uh, uh, I would ask Jim to do the honorable thing and step away from the committee now. And- uh, Don, uh, yeah, Lucky, if I had known by sending this out that I would be excused from the committee, I would have sent it out early. <laughs> and, that, and I'm being facetious when I say that. I'm happy to serve the election committee and, and I make myself available for that. Um, th this has been posted. Does, does Don want to, does Don want to get into this before I, before I respond? If I'm recognized by the chair, I'll be happily speak. Why, and why, I do why, like Don, why don't you go ahead and make your statement and then, then we'll let Jim respond. Okay. This was posted before any uh, applications were ever submitted. So it's premature for openers. Uh, I'm thip scanned and whatever Mr. Hare wants to say or uh, call me names or whatever, that's fine. We have free speech. We're blessed with free speech. And uh, it's a cherished thing. There's no requirement anybody has to put their brain in gear uh, before they open their mouth. Uh, but so this is very uh, premature. There are a couple of air, uh, bits of misinformation. It says the, that the uh, election will be in April. That's not true. Uh, he has endorsed a candidate. Uh, who, of course, we don't know if she'll be a candidate. There's been no application submitted. Uh, uh, Ms. Burgess, who was a member of this board, uh, she'll be surprised to know that her new name now is Michelle. Uh, so, it, it's got misinformation in here. Um, I think it's unfortunate in the minutes uh, for the last meeting, Mandy Havlick was asked to step down. We have in the minutes that someone cannot be up for election. When uh, Mandy served the committee and served it well, it dragged out for another year. And uh, the reason that somebody up for election can't be uh, on the election committee is that they have impartiality and no ax to grind. Uh, so what this thing that's posted is someone who's not impartial. And I think the easiest way around it would be for the individual to just agree to step down. All right. Um, I was at that meeting, and I'd like to comment uh, if the whole letter had been screenshotted or saved as it was, this was from 2020 from last year. And I believe that this shows uh, Jim's uh, exercising his First Amendment rights. So, well, uh, but yeah, yeah. From 20, Mike, perhaps, perhaps this is the time for me to speak. Can go I ahead. stop sharing the screen? Yeah, you can stop sharing the screen. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and let Jim speak. The, 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 the reason why this letter, that this document is not even a letter. Uh, became in any way available other than on the hard drive of my computer was 
I was taking notes during the election committee meeting and which were the basis of the bullet points that, the, that were shared um, this evening as a part of the framework for conducting the election. Uh, and what I did was ham-handedly uh, plucked the wrong file to post into the chat section on the Zoom meeting. This was a, a private document never meant for publication. Um, and, as I, and as I say, if I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to continue to serve on the election committee um, and happy to provide my services to counting votes and everything. I have been on the election committee previously uh, and it's a lot of work. There's a lot of numbers to count up and do. Um, with regards to the contents of the letter, the, the, the contents of that document I drafted that document after the candidates forum in 2020 when we were going to have an election. And it was an email that I was going to send to my friends in the peninsula area with my own recommendations for votes. The, the reason why uh, uh, Burgess is on there is because she was a candidate at that time. The reason why Lucky and Don were on there is because they were candidates at that time. This document could not have presaged what we were talking about in the committee meeting. It was a document from that time. It had a similar title to the document that I posted. And so, yeah, it became public. And frankly, I stand behind what the document, as fragmentary as it is, says. Um, and, if, and if Lucky believes that I haven't witnessed or, or is surprised by anything that I would say about his comments having to do with people with expertise who he has wanted to have off the candidate. I'm not gonna defend the statement. It's something that I believe in. And if Don believes that I would support him for election back to this board, he, 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 our, we, our controversies over the years should make clear to him that I would support him. I would not count votes for him. I, I would conduct an election impartial, impartially. I would do the same for anybody that was on this board. So if the board, uh, if the board wants to take action to take me off the elections committee, that's fine. I am prepared to serve because the because the committee simply needs the manpower. But if if the board would prefer to have me um, off of the election committee, I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm perfectly happy to begin my community planning group retirement, and I'm perfectly happy to have through this conversation, uh, uh, my, my view with regards to those two individuals become more public through their action to place it in the, in the conversation today. It, 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 the email might have gone to a dozen people and now there's a great many more than that are hearing my comments and I stand behind them. Thank you. All right. Um, I know Cameron has been waiting to make a pub, uh, public comment for a while, so we're gonna move on. Cameron, uh, if you wanna make a public comment. Cameron, are you there? I'm asking him to unmute and he is not. There we go. There, there, we, go. Is. there he is. All right. All right. So um, I was at the election committee last week and um, I had a lot of time this weekend to kind of think about the discussion and everything else. Um, I One, I don't think it's unreasonable to expect people to just put like a bill uh, in with their application when they drop it off at the, at the library. You can easily black out the... Uh, the account number. Um, to be quite frank, uh, PII is, is kind of a weak argument in today's day and age. Based off your first and last name um, in approximate location, I can find out everything about you from uh, your first home purchase to your entire history to how much you owe on student, student loans. Um, I agree that we don't necessarily need to send in a driver's license, but I don't think it's unreasonable to do a SDG and E bill or some sort of some sort of bill ver verification. I don't think we need to completely retract the entire uh, bylaws on this, um, but I do think it's important that we do have some sort of accountability with that. I also have thought long and hard about the mail stuff. I, there's no way we can guarantee the integrity of a ballot that's going to a post office box. I have no way to verify or anybody to verify for that matter, who picks up the ballots, what happens to the ballots, how many numbers of ballots there are, and everything else. And in light of everything tonight, there's a lot of distrust obviously going on. 
I think we need to make this as open and as transparent as possible. I think we need to stick to a drop box that's manned by various members of the community, uh, the committee. And um, I think that uh, we need to make this election as transparent as possible. I really think that by allowing mail-in voting and then not only allowing mail-in voting, but not having any sort of actual verification process or any process in place to handle the ballots from the pickup at the post office. I mean, so Brad goes down and picks up the ballots. All right. Uh, how do I know David doesn't do it or I don't do it or someone else claiming to be the PCP doesn't go down and do the ballots? How do I know all the ballots get counted? How many ballots there are? All one has to do is go over the last couple of months to look at a myriad of reasons why mail in ballot uh, mail in balloting is a very bad idea. And I think that the board needs to reconsider the mail in ballot, uh, balloting in particular and and just have a drop box. I don't think it's unreasonable to drop off a ballot off at the library. Plus, it allows us to actually verify that one person is voting with one ballot. Right. I could easily send 220 ballots from Park Point Loma very easily and stuff the post office box well before uh, the election. This opens up a can of worms that I don't think we need, especially in light of this letter and everything else that's going on. I, I think that we have all served the community well in our own way. Lucky has served the community very well through you know, his time as a reporter on the Union Tribune and afterwards with this, with this uh, board. I feel like Lucky has done a good job. He's served our country. He worked at the VA. He's done and worked as hard in the same way as David and same way as Jim. Corla, every member on this board has served their community in one way or the other. And it's very unfortunate that we have allowed personal biases to get in the way of, of our election integrity. And so while I have only been around with the board for about three years now, I have seen slates of people advocate for people. I've never seen slates of people go against individuals. Although I you know, um, respect everyone's own opinions and how they all do it, I just think this is a very unfortunate um, happenstance. And I think that we really just need to simplify the process, have just a ballot drop off box, not do the mail-in balloting and have some sort of verification set up for the people uh, that drop off the ballot. And uh, thank you for your time. Thanks, Cameron. All right, do we have any other comments before we call for a vote, Margaret? I did actually, I agree with Cameron after thinking about it a little bit more here, he brings up some good points. The validation process has always been something that's been set in stone. Our committee did play back and forth with that pretty thoroughly, I think. Um, I, we did mention the, you know, having a safe because the library is pretty much closed right now. I know I saw the Girl Scouts, a couple Girl Scouts selling cookies over the weekend. They're on that lot. They were doing it pretty safely, too, is kind of like a drive through is how we should call it. You know, a drive through election ballot process and just, of course, have some volunteers do it safe um, with all the COVID guidelines. I think that's feasible. I did read, and it's all over the news at the mail, and I'm experiencing, experiencing this at home and at work. The mail system right now is extremely slow. That's my only concern. And I did see somewhere on the news that eventually, I think they're going to be rolling into a strike soon. So that can affect the election process as well. So that's my only concern is the mail Mail in ballot. And again, I what I brought to the committee that wasn't discussed today is the efficiency process that the OB Town Council had with their um, latest election. I did pitch that to our committee. And again, we ran through it pretty, pretty efficiently with the details about the virtual, you know, voting process. Um, but again, our voters for the peninsula, they come in stacks, 400 to 500 voters at a time. And they've always been accustomed and used to the drop off. I don't know what it is, just having that ballot in your hand, the verification process and dropping it off. So we know that as Cameron mentioned, you're not gonna get 200 ballots at the last minute for whatever reason. So that's my two cents. Uh, Robert, you have a comment? Yeah, I mean, I agree the mail system obviously is having some problems, but I would think that not anybody can just walk into the post office and say, I want the mail for the planning board. I think the officers or somebody should be on a signature card there. I know with the Plenum Association, you know, box, you, somebody could arbitrarily just go in and ask for the mail without them being qualified. Just a note. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Don, you have another comment? Yeah. I, I don't want to get caught in a parliamentary uh, bind here. I would think the probably the majority of the uh, 
of the board feels that dropping the mail-in ballots, and it's actually to a private mailbox, not the post office, would make of dropping that would make it simpler. And that's what I would suggest to David, rather than making an amendment. But I don't think the board, it makes it simpler on the election committee just to have one, one form. And that um, I'm not in favor. My, my sense is that the board itself is not in favor. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if, da I don't see David. So I don't know if David is willing to, uh, I know. The David, what's your thought about the mail-in ballots? I can't hear you. I stick with the motion. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Um, Cameron, you uh, you uh, you just gave a long comment. So Cameron, if you have something quick, go ahead and add it in because I want to. I think we're gonna have to have a vote here. Move on. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. No, I just want to follow and say, no, Robert Drew Jackson, I agree with you. Not any Yahoo can come in and get get the the ballots. But, but I do think that the, the mail-in about, because the problem with the procedure that you guys have is you have no uh, chain of custody of who picks up the ballots. You don't have it by person. You don't have it by name. Who picks up the ballots? Who brings the ballots, ballots in for counting? And I don't like that we're just fairy dusting the process of, oh, we'll figure it out. It, it needs to be open. It needs to be transparent. And of course, you know, I, 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 I'm really upset, David, that you don't even take the time to even uh, address this issue because just like this and many other issues, you just ignore the people's you requests and comments. And I, that's all I have. All right, Cameron. Uh, you had plenty of time to discuss this. We went for two hours on Friday the 12th. There was plenty of time to talk about. It. Don't tell me about not being reasonable or considering anything. All right, well, I think it's time to have a vote. Let's find out where we're at. We've had long enough here. So, I'm sorry, David, did you, you were, you were breaking up. So, uh, did you have something else to add? Don't worry about it. Okay. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. The motion is to approve the election as outlined um, in the election committee notes of uh, February 12th, 2021. So, um, let's go. Everyone in favor of the election procedures, um, raise their hand. And I'm, we're going to have to make sure to count these here. So I want to make sure everybody's got count. I've got, hold on here. I got David, Jim, Brad, Mark. Corla, Robert. Are there any other yes votes that I'm missing? One, two, three, four, five, six yeses. That's what I count, Fred. That's what I count. Okay. All those against the election procedure, raise your hand. All right. I have Margaret, Don, Lucky. Mandy, am I missing anybody there? I count four as well. Yeah, there we go. We're having an election, six to four. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. Got a question. Brad's got a question. Brad's waving his hand. Oh, is he leaving? I don't know. Brad, you have a question or are you leaving? Yeah, I had a, I, well, I just had a comment. Okay. <clears throat> I see Cameron's point. Um, you know, uh, if he wants, I mean, if I'm the one that's going to pick him up, if he'd like to join me, would that be something that might be successful? or acceptable in terms of making this procedure more secure? Well, I think there I mean, should not really to, be- I mean, I know we're not in the same bubble, but we could go in, I mean, geez. Uh, uh, I mean, how, how, how do we, I mean, points well taken. Uh, 
frankly, I like mail-in voting myself, but um, uh, you know, we, we don't want this to be something that people are going to feel bad about. I mean, we want the people to feel comfortable about how this election went, it was especially yeah, considering. Well, I think you should, you should be the primary person, Brad, because you're kind of impartial. They know you down there and, and go there go there regularly, pick them up. But if, if you get a third party like Cameron to help you, that's, I'd be OK with me. Well, I mean, at least to. I'm not comfortable, you know, I'm not comfortable in, with having a non-board member who is also not on the election committee being okay. involved in the election of the county. Well, just, just an observer? <laughs> I, I don't think it'd be the I think the Did issue is more remember? the process. The yeah, and know. also I would agree with David Dick just because he's not part of the election committee, and I do plan on running for re-election. So I don't. That's true. That's right. Yeah, Cameron. Cameron. Uh, all, right, all right. I was just Cameron trying to be because of Mandy. That's right. Thank you, right. Brad. I, I think it was really came down to the process. I see that he left the meeting, but I really think it just came down to the process and you know the dependency of the the post office. You know, and earlier in the conversation. I know that um, David or Brad kind of went back like anyone could go in and ask for the, you know, the contents of the PO box. I think oh, that's where the concern came from. Yeah. Oh, one, one thing I would like to say, though, is if we are adopting this March 4th cutoff for submittals, I mean, we're looking at a couple of weeks before the election. I mean, we're going to know right then, are we going to have an election, yeah. right? I, I mean, will. are we going to have 11? We'll find out. We'll find out. But I mean, you know, uh, so that part may never come to be. So Thank curious. You, Brad. That's, that's a valid point, because if we have 11 people, they're just going to slide into the spots. Yeah, they're just if, boom, they're in. If we have less than 11, right. they're still going to slide in. So we just have to wait and see what applications come in to see if, if we even have to go through the process at all. Nobody exactly. knows. Nobody has a feel for how it's going to go, how the people are going to turn out for voting. We just got to wait and see. Right, right. Well, I think David, it's a really David good idea, the, though, to David have that early date, because that has been an issue in the past, to have that early date, and then it'll give us knowledge and be able to to answer all these questions right up. Yeah. All right, well, everybody, I, I'd love to talk about the election all night, but we do have other things we have to do. David is the chair. You know who the committee is. If you have questions, Brad, work with David, and, and we'll move forward with the election. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark, because we've had some patient people that are trying to get their uh, projects approved and we need to get those those projects through. And so take it away, Mark. Well, thank you, Fred. And um, thank, thank you, board, for going through this, getting this election to pull off. I don't think it's gonna be a perfect, a perfect election, but we're not living in perfect times right now. And I think everybody just needs to say, we're gonna try our best to pull it off and get 11 people to come out and, and run for our board. So uh, good luck with that. All right, um, this, this evening we're gonna look at uh, four projects. Um, these are probably the, the last four that we'll be doing, you know, maybe, uh, you know, while I'm around. But um, the first one's a map waiver and the other three are ADUs, which are accessory dwelling units, which we see a lot of. The first one's a map waiver. Um, it is project, uh, Etiwanda map waiver. It's project uh, 666686. It's in a multifamily RM1-1 zone. This is primarily a, a map to create two condominiums on one single property on Etiwanda. Um, the original property, um, the original project, the coastal development permit for this project was originally reviewed by this board back in 2017 and approved at that time in January. So four years ago, we looked at it, um, approved the building and now the applicant is back asking for a map waiver to create a condominium, two single unit condominiums on one piece of property. So we have Maggie rolling here. And if Maggie wants to um, take us quickly through um, the original design, what is actually being built right now under construction, and then a quick description of what the map waiver is we can open up to conversation. Now we did vote on this and we voted in favor of passing the map waiver after reviewing the architecture for a, a long time, uh, five to one at, in, in project review. Maggie? Mark, do you have any documents you can uh, share? Yeah, Maggie's got, Maggie's got- I a, think that'll a, help. Yeah, Maggie's got a quick little view of what we've got here. Right, Maggie? Yep. 
Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, this project hasn't changed from when it was uh, approved with the coastal development permit previously. There is currently a single family home with a very large front yard. Um, well, currently there is under construction um, the second new home that is at the, at the front of the property here. So this first screenshot I'm showing you here, the top drawing is the existing site with the existing home. The top, the bottom drawing here is the proposed site plan. I know it's a little small, hard to read, but the rest of this might help. Um, I'm gonna blow this up a little bit. <laughs> Gives you a better picture of the footprint um, with kind of a tucked under driveway here with two additional parking spaces and a two story structure up above. Um, I think maybe cut to this chase. So this, this is the property as it exists. Um, and then this is an architectural drawing of the added unit. So it's a tuck under drive. And then you go back to these parking spaces back here. So you drive here under that overhang and these are you two, two spark parking spaces. The owner of the property currently lives in the back house. And it wasn't the original applicant. This is uh, someone after. Um, so this is currently under construction. And as we've had this conversation in the past, the question before the board is ownership. So um, this is an application for uh, condominium purposes to uh, create this as two individual condominium units to be owned separately versus a two on one on a single lot. So this is the uh, floor plan. This is the downstairs. It's a bedroom uh, with outdoor access, uh, interior stairs that go into the living area, an office and then the master bedroom. So um, this is kind of a side view um, and it's currently under construction, which most of you I'm sure are aware. Um, and this is, this is the rendering. So the question is whether or not we can get this tentative map for condominium purposes approved. This last screen shot here is what the tentative map looks like. It's a footprint um, and encompasses the entire lot because the condominium plan will record on top of that to actually separate the condo units. Does anybody okay. have any questions? Yeah, for me? If we can exit the, exit the uh, share screen and see if we have any questions. For no problem. Maggie or Mark. Uh, Margaret, go ahead. I attend this meeting and although the committee voted, whatever it was, the numbers 5141, there was a lot, a lot of discussion on the concerns of this project. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, we spent a lot of time on, on discussing the concerns, which were if this lot gets split up into condos, it really doesn't go at all with that street or that neighborhood. It's a gigantic high rise project that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. That was kind of the concerns parking. I mean, how many people will be in these split condos on this lot? Um, you know, a lot of those questions that weren't really answered is kind of just like up in the air with a rush to approve the, the waiver. So although the committee um, approved it, there was a lot of discussion from people that were non-committee members about, about this project. So I just wanted to address that and record that for the board. So would that be, would it be fair to say that the, the one vote against it were based upon those concerns, Margaret? Yes. And, and additional concerns. That's what I took out of the conversations as far as concerns go. All right. Any other, any other questions? 
Mark, do you want to make a motion? Um, yeah, first, I'd, I'd like to say, yeah, we did have a long conversation on the architecture, the Balkan scale, um, uh, the FAR, the height, uh, parking, number of bedrooms. Um, but it came down to um, that we already approved it. Um, this board had approved that project that it built that we just looked at back in 2017. And now we're looking at a map waiver. And what we what we have the problem in the past is we get projects, multifamily projects that are built, and then they come back and give us the map waiver, and we said we had nothing to say about the architecture. And this one, we did have everything to say about the architecture. We went through the exercise, we approved it. We spent an hour last, or maybe a half hour, forty five minutes talking about the architecture that we've already approved, and didn't spend very. We spent very little time in the real discussion, which is in this building, in these two houses, do we want homeowners there or do we want renters there? And it came down to saying, hey, we feel that it's better for these neighborhoods to have homeowners in these neighborhoods than to have renters because homeowners tend to take more um, uh, presence of their ownership. They, they, they take care of the neighbors. You know, they take care of their neighbors and they take care of their property. So we can go ahead and vote in favor of the map waiver and putting all the architecture aside and all the parking aside and all the number of bedrooms saying, hey, the map waiver is what we're here to vote on. And that's what we did vote on. But it was a good conversation um, that we had on last Thursday. Uh, Brad, you got a question? No, I, I, I attended also. And um, I remember when we did approve this a long time ago and we talked about it a lot then too. Um, to Margaret's comments, I mean, it does have four parking places. I mean, it market meets the criteria, right? It's significantly under 30 feet. Right. It's under the FAR. It's got the adequate parking and it's already in a multifamily zone. Um, we need housing. And frankly, I think that talking about homeowners and renters has potential for kind of discriminatory sort of language. Um, I'm a little uncomfortable with that. Um, I mean, Everybody's a resident, right? We represent everybody. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a map waiver. We already approved the project. It's hard to say, I don't know how you say no. Okay, so does anybody wanna make a motion related to this project? Yeah, I'll make that motion um, to go ahead and approve the map waiver for Adawanda. Okay, do we have so a, I think a I second? Last time. I'll second. Corla got the second. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of approving the MAP waiver, raise your hands. All right. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six in favor. Eight. All those opposed? I've got th three. Margaret, Don, and Lucky. All right. Passes six to three. Congratulations, Maggie. Well, thank you for your time, everybody. I appreciate it. So, um, Good luck on your election. Thanks, Maggie. Thank um, second project uh, is the uh, Marseille Street Coastal Development Permit. This is a process two, project number 648383. Eight, eight, it's an RS 1 7, which is a single uh, family um, residential zone. Location is 4414 Marseille. This coast development permit to, to build a new 640 square foot companion unit um, to the site. Detached companion unit to the site. We have uh, uh, Audrey Lulin from Lulin Design. Um, she wants to jump on the screen and grab it. Are you there? Okay. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hi. We reviewed this um, in project review while she's putting up the screen um, and, and was approved 4 0 with Corla um, abstaining from the vote. <clears throat> Good evening. I, uh, I was just turning up my sound a little bit there. Okay. This uh, project. Um, 
as uh, as Mark said, is at 4414 Marseille, and it's a new accessory dwelling unit. And um, here is an. Can you hear me okay? I can. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Doing great. Looks good. The, Great. So this is a, um, a map of the area. It's near Marseille and, um, and uh, Hill Street, kind of this area right in here. This is an aerial view of the lot. So this is Marseille and Cornish and Hill. And uh, this is the existing house in the front here. This is going to be re remain intact the way that it is. One story house. This is a view of the site plan. And then this is Marseille Street and an alley. And existing house footprint here will remain the same. And then we've got a one story um, ADU in the back here, 640 square feet, one bedroom, one bath. Uh, we do not exceed our FAR or our height requirements. So we're not asking for any special um, uh, requests on height or lot coverage or any of that kind of stuff. We're all under the numbers there. Um, Lot size is 7,200 square feet, existing house 1419, the ADU is 640. Uh, so our FAR uh, floor area ratio is 4,104 and we are at 2,395. This is the project site here. Here's the existing house, single story and um, this is across the street, just to give you a little perspective, if you don't go down that street too much, uh, single and double story on the street. This is across the street, uh, kind of a bigger house there. So a mixture of one and two stories. Um, this project is, um, and this is up on Cornish here. This project is um, gonna be located right in the back of the house here. And it's a couple and they have a son who they wanna, um, provide some housing for him when he finishes college. So, um, you know, they didn't want to get big and fancy with anything too big, just something kind of simple that fits in the backyard. Um, pretty straightforward. This is a floor plan. So it's a um, good sized bedroom, bathroom, little work area, and then an open kitchen and living. So one bedroom, one bath. Um, here's the uh, west and east elevation, the ends basically, and the height is uh, 12 feet, five inches. And then the north elevation, south elevation, and uh, that's pretty much it. Any questions? If you get out of the screen share, it's easier for me to see if people have questions. Oh, thank you, okay. All right, do we have any questions? Margaret. You're on move, Margaret. Thank you, Corla. <laughs> I'll make a motion to, because um, this one also was discussed pretty thoroughly and this was unanimous with no concerns really at the meeting. Go, we have Mar a motion by Margaret to approve. Do we have a second? Only because we, only because we have a lot of stuff to get a, to tackle. <laughs> All right, Brad second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approving this project? All right, I've got one, two, three, four. Coral, are you voting for this or not? Oh, you're abstaining. I'm okay. abstaining. One, two, I know the three, applicant. Four, five, six, seven. Got seven yeses. All those opposed? And who's abstaining? Me. And what's your grounds for abstaining? I know the applicants. Okay, that's a good ground. All right, you, hey, you have, uh, yeah. you're passing seven to zip. Hey, Brad, to I, seven I, zip got, I got eight. Eight, uh, maybe I it was eight. eight. Okay, I think five. that is eight. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I probably missed one. All Great, right. thank you. Thank you for letting me present and uh, appreciate your support. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Number, action item number three is the Tompkins ADU. This is a coastal development permit. It's process two. Uh, project number 671643. Uh, this is an RS 1-7 zone and it's at 4475 Del Monte. This is the coastal development permit to rebuild an existing 400 square foot detached garage and add an extra 400 square foot ADU companion unit on top of it with access off the alley. We have Darren uh, McColsky. 
here to present. Um, Darren, you want to give a quick screen share um, and just rip us through what you got? Down there, Darren. Hey, Darren. Darren. Sorry, I'm muted. I don't have anything for the screen share. Last time, last meeting, you guys had put that up. Is that a, is that a possibility? Got it right there, Darren. Thank you. Everybody see that? Uh, I can see it. Yeah. Yep. So essentially, this is an existing uh, residence here, um, and the the applicants are looking to uh, do a project that's twofold. One is to repair and renovate an existing uh, garage that uh, that needs some attention, one story flat roof, and they would also like to put a ADU on top of it with a roof deck. Um, We've gone through the city, uh, two versions of comments, uh, based on the fact that this unit is hugging the property lines, um, we are basically not permitted easily to expand it. So we are allowed to renovate and rebuild the garage and stay within the parameters of the square footage that exists and build on top. Um, we are, from a design point of view, uh, sort of mimicking the existing the garage that's there, um, stucco with parapet walls, um, flat roof, which is the roof deck, and um, it sort of it sort of blends into the design of the house as well, which I believe is uh, is fairly old. Um, I I I think we touched on this at the last meeting. <clears throat> Um, I don't believe that there's an intent to um, rent this unit out per se. I know that the owners have uh, children that, you know, in the beginning of COVID were maybe coming back home. Um, maybe they're not now, I'm not sure, but, but um, I know that the owners want to move into this and renovate portions of their existing house. That's the short term, the long term. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of, but I don't believe that they're going to be looking for a, a rental income per se. Um, like I had already said, the garage is in is in pretty good disrepair at the moment on the alley. So uh, the first part of the project is to renovate and rebuild the garage, get that back up to snuff, same square footage, same footprint, and, uh, and construct the ADU above. Uh, that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, Mark, I don't, I don't know if I heard you. Was there a vote at what was the vote at uh, project review? Oh, this one we had five zero in favor of passing it. We had you know very little comments. Um, the architecture matched the house, which is something that we've asked for from the, from the applicants. And when they provide parking, is a, ben a benefit for all of the community because um, some of the new regs don't require as much parking as they did in the past. And just in all these cases, um, all three of these examples today actually provided parking and their architecture looked like the house. And with the building of the second story, are they within the 30 foot limit? Okay. And I like the that there's mentioned they want to put a, a, a wheelchair lift in there so that owners can access the property. So. Okay. Do we want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the Tompkins ADU CDP. Okay, do I have a second? I will. Mark, okay. Corley, you're the second. Any further discussion or questions? All right. All those in favor of approving the Tompkins uh, project, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine to nothing. There you go, Darren. Nine to nothing. You, you, you got it. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Thanks, Darren. Okay, and, and thank you everybody for, for going through these with us. Um, uh, these are going to be um, what we're gonna be reviewing a lot of in the next few years is the simple little companion unit, guest quarters, and now they're calling them ADU. So get used to that, accessory dwelling unit. All right, last one is um, probably the nicest one that we're gonna look at today. This is the Stromer ADU CDP. This is uh, process two, project 676418. It's also in a single family residential RF 1-7 zone. It's at 865 Cordova Street. 
Coast Development Permit to build a new 451 square foot ADU above an existing detached garage. And uh, we have uh, Micah um, here with us. And Hello, can you hear me? Yep, yep. Give us a rundown of what you got. Take us through it. This is a, this is a nice one. And you can see the screen, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm the architect, Micah, um, with Mary Lampert. I'll just run through this really quickly. Um, yeah, it's at Cordova Street. Here's just a quick image of it. Here's the vicinity map. Here's Cordova. Here's the property. That's where the existing detached garage is. Here's some photos of the existing garage. We are building on top of it. Here's a site plan showing the existing residence. We're not touching it. Here's the garage. And um, here is um, showing kind of where the staircase is and how to access it. Here are some details about the project. Talks about the square footage and um, all that information. We are not exceeding any of the height limits. I think we're at 22 feet. Um, just real quick, the purpose of the project is to create a companion unit over the existing detached garage for the current owner's daughter to live in. Um, it includes a bedroom, a bathroom, a living and kitchen area, and a little laundry closet and an exterior deck. Here's that the garage level. We're putting in a new fence gate here. Access is from the rear um, inside the courtyard. Um, here's a staircase. Here's the floor plan. You walk up the staircase. The main entrance is off the deck. Um, and then again, here's a living area with the kitchen. Here's a small bedroom, bathroom, and then a laundry closet. And uh, here's another shot of the inside. All right. If you can exit the screen share, we'll see if there's any questions. I'll just ask my question. Do, do you do you get a view of the ocean from that from that unit? <laughs> um, you do, there's a two story structure across the street and a big tree, but yeah, you'll get peaks of it. Yes. Okay, peaks of it. Right. Tree. Yeah. All right. And was this approved five to nothing, Mark? Or yes, yes, it was. I did. We did go up by here. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? I'll motion. I'll motion to approve. Do we have a second? Corla? Yeah. yeah. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. All Thank right. You guys appreciate nine it. To nothing. Nice project. Good job. Teresa, I see. Uh, Teresa, do you have a question on this? Sorry, not on this, but I do have a question regarding uh, the three houses on on uh, 3100 block of Finlon Street. There's been a lot of talk about they're going to be building a 25 uh, unit condos there. And um, the three houses look like something hit a, like a bomb. Um, and they told us they were going to be starting next month. I want to know how that's going or if you guys even know about it. May I elaborate, Fred, if you go may? Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm so sorry. Are we done with the project review? We just finished project review, so we're going to move on. But yes, we're all done. You're approving with project. the projects, Mark? Yeah. Uh, okay. So really quickly, we've been getting, Therese, I know Therese really well. We're close with the Portuguese community. I invited her to come here because there is an overwhelming amount of um, neighbors in that area that Therese is referencing, um, and they were not able to attend your last project review meeting mark so she's here today to just kind of ask some information on that if you have heard of anything come through the pipelines because there's a i mean a big amount of people therese right yeah i know have reached out to me have reached out to therese and and they wanted to kind of put it on our agenda and our radar for discussion and upcoming agenda all right good, good. The address, yeah. Margaret. thank you very much um Therese, Therese, do you have the address for Fred? Yeah, I have. I have. Bill Joyce sent me something back in August 14th of last summer asking me the question about 3311, 3119, or 31. Yeah, all three addresses in the 3300 block. And, and I looked at it, I see nothing so far, 
right? But it's on my radar of projects to keep an eye on. That's why I said I have it right here, highlighted, you know, saying, hey, look at these things. Um, we, you know, we haven't seen anything yet. There's been zero of anything submitted, um, zero of anything. When I looked, there was nothing there. But I would say keep reaching out to us because when it comes up, let's get on it, right? And let's look at it. But we have nothing yet. Okay, and, and well, could I be correct, Mark? Uh, those are RM 4 7 zoning there, and there could only be on three lots 21 units. It's okay. like that jar is 15, they yeah. 15 on three, three lots. So uh, the maximum I think would be 21, just as a, a addendum here. Yeah, the email looks like they wanted to put 25, is what 25. Like. That's what the rumor is out there in town. Well, so. it's not a rumor because we talked to the, the, the owner and because we were having issues because they were renting out the houses to students. And we, the, my dad lives there. He's 90 years old. And um, they were having these crazy parties till four or five in the morning and destroying the, at the other houses as Bill Joyce's. Bill Joyce, as a matter of fact, last week just got vandalized again. And, uh, and then he told, the, the owner told us not to worry about it, that they were going to start tearing down next month and start their 25 units of condos. Uh, so I don't see where they're going to fit them all because one of the lots, I think the, the first one, the 3111 or whatever it is, is very narrow to be even putting two condos on it, let alone four. So um, I'll just come back and, uh, you know, and Margaret will keep me in the loop on it. I'm, we're just neighbors that are concerned for our parents uh, and our, you know, and our neighbors around us. It was a happy place before, but it hasn't been for a while. Well, Therese, we, we definitely appreciate you, you highlighting it. So we have advanced notice. Brad, do you have a comment on this? No, I was just wanted to, uh, it's a thousand square feet. I mean, one unit per thousand square feet in there, isn't it? Is that correct, Corla? You live over there. I I, th I thought it was the zoning. It's RM four seven, so I at seven and th and three lots at seven would make it twenty one. I I don't I don't know any more than that. It's it's. Yo, I, I'm just saying. Well, it goes by the existing square footage of the lot. So I'm just looking at it on a map, and I'm just wondering is that is that twenty five thousand square feet? I I I, I don't know and that. I defer to you too. Um, you've been doing this a while. Yeah. <laughs> All uh, right. That was that was my only comment. I, I just don't know how they get. Yeah, we, we, we do have a lot. We've been yeah. going for a while. We've got a lot to go. So yes. Gonna, well, okay. just thank but you I'm for having day. listening to me. And and like I said, I'll I'll keep up with Margaret and see what goes on. We're just kind of concerned and thought this would be the best place to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. All right, let's we'll move through the agenda here, and I appreciate the uh, the Ocean Beach people hanging in with us. But we're gonna we'll get to you, um, Corla. Is there anything you need guidance at CPC? Yeah, the the last meeting, of course, everybody's mind is elections. Big discussion about that. We finally finally got direction from the city. Um, CPC discussed the the PARC, which I think is coming on our agenda. Uh, the grand jury report. So what I have is the, uh, the proposed agenda, Todd Gloria will be there Tuesday. And then there are going to be big discussions about the electricity and gas supply franchise agreements. Now, I, I'm not into it, I, I don't care that much, <laughs> but I'm happy to take any concerns or if you guys are concerned, you should attend CPC on Tuesday and I can share the joining information. And then something on the agenda is going to be environmental justice uh, update environmental justice policies. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but those are the things uh, coming up for Tuesday. If there's anything anybody's concerned about or would like me to uh, comment or say, or again, please uh, join the, the meeting if you would like to hear what's going on with those items. Any questions or comments for Corla? All right, well, I'm glad that Todd Gloria is coming there. I mean, it's that's good for CPC and um, but that environmental justice is going to be affecting us. So get, us get us some information on that. Yeah. All right. We have uh, an update on Famosa Canyon. Uh, Margaret, do you want to give that? Um, I think is Cameron still here? I think he yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, give it. He, oh. he, him and I have been on top of this and just, I mean, there's rumors out there that um, Cameron, 
Why don't you go ahead? Go ahead, Cameron. All right. So, hey, everybody. So here's here's what's been going on. So uh, I think it was November. Fred got the heads up at the San Diego Housing Commission. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm home now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we got All you. Right. We got All right. Um, so the San Diego Housing Commission had a public uh, hearing on whether or not to enter into exclusive uh, uh, negotiations with uh, Bridge Housing. So they had chosen Bridge Housing as their preferred developer to develop the Famosa Canyon. The proposed development, um, it, it appears that the letter we wrote them had some sort of effect on them because the proposed development uh, preserved the wetland, uh, would have put it into a city park and would have put in uh, uh, native plants and uh, restored the wetland to normal. Uh, the traffic inputs, they seem to address uh, potential traffic uh, concerns in and out of the housing area. And um, it seemed like they had, had listened to it. The only significant issue that came out of it was they wanted to sell the land to Bridge Company for $800,000, of which 1000 would be a loan from the Housing Commission, which was woefully under market rate. And um, against, and of course, we're against uh, any habitual uh, uh, development of, of the Famosa Canyon. I know the board has a slightly different position, but I'm just saying my group, we're opposed to any habitual uh, development of the of the canyon. So at the hearing, there was over 270 public comments against development of it. Uh, the board still voted to enter into exclusive negotiations uh, with Bridge. It then went to the city council. We had over uh, 200 people ready to give public comment uh, to the city council on this issue. And shockingly enough, the city council, um, there was an issue with the communication of public comments, so they delayed it one week. Following week, we had over 170 people uh, there to give public comment on it. And shockingly enough, they couldn't get the public comment to work either. And then on December 18th, uh, Council Member Campbell tabled the item um, uh, back into committee. Uh, and that is where it's at as far as we know right now. It has not come back on the docket for the city council. Um, what they are proposing though is so, what I do know is the economics of the development have changed and we are waiting to find out if Bridge is going to submit a new proposal or back out of the proposal. But that is basically where we're at right now. Okay, well, thank you for the update. Does anybody have any questions for Cameron? All right, perfect. Thank you, Cameron. All right. We are gonna to turn to uh, action item number two, which is the OB letter on the short-term vacation rental ordinance. So um, I put this on the agenda because uh, the city council is gonna be voting on the, on the new proposal on February 23rd. So this is really our only chance. I know we haven't studied this, so I'm not sure whether we can take any action or we feel comfortable, but I think it's an important issue. It certainly affects Ocean Beach and it affects Point Loma. And so I, I invited Andrea, who is the chair of the Ocean Beach planning board and is a very talented person too. So I invited her, Andrea, do you wanna give us a little background on your letter and then uh, we'll open it up for discussion. Okay. Um, thanks so much. Uh, first, I'm just gonna drop in the chat here the agenda for the city council meeting. Uh, so you have the way to sign in if you wanna give comments um, you know, on your own or on behalf of the board that day. And they also have a way that you can type in comment and unfortunately you can't make it. It's gonna start at about 11 on the 23rd. Uh, so that is next Tuesday at 11 a.m. So we've had a working group for a while uh, looking at all the different STVR regulations. And this really came out of that uh, and our, our lengthy discussions. What our main focus was and our main issue with the ordinance of how it's proposed is that it is going to result in uh, clustering of these STVRs in the beach communities and probably parts of Hillcrest downtown and North Park as well, because there is uh, two things that we think could really affect change. No district cap, so per district cap, it's a city wide cap instead of capping the STVRs per district. Uh, and then also there's no distance requirement. So you could get very easily get five of these shoved in on the same block, which we obviously see a lot of in Ocean Beach, um, particularly west of Sunset Cliffs. Uh, and 
there's just some other concerns about you know, how how much the fees are going to be charged so that we have an accurate way to actually enforce this. Uh, like you guys were talking about an obnoxious party house. We don't want those to happen and we want this to be fully funded. Uh, so we have that ability to enforce and then enforce. I think another key part of the proposal and one I really fought for uh, was a, a mechanism that triggers a reevaluation. So if we're not hitting a certain percentage of compliance. So if we find that, uh, you know, <laughs> if less than 80% of all of the listed STVRs in San Diego um, aren't actually permitted and, and properly processed through this ordinance, then that would trigger a reevaluation of how this is going to work. Because uh, we highly doubt that people who have been operating their STVRs for a while, if they suddenly don't get one of these permits through the, uh, through the lottery process, that they're just going to go away uh, and kind of just roll over and take it. Because some of these STBRs very easily pull in six figures a year. Uh, so we just want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to have an enforceable ordinance, uh, one that doesn't stick the beach and coastal communities like ours and yours with the burden of, of this housing loss and, um, you know, making sure that also <laughs> that burden isn't placed on just certain blocks and swaths of neighborhoods as well. So those are the main uh, components. And then I'm happy to answer any questions if you guys read the letter about any of the other points that we made. All right. Well, thank you, Andrea. And I think I, I was very impressed with the detail. You guys, you guys obviously spent a lot, a lot of time looking at this. So very impressive. Yeah, we have a lot of board members that specifically joined the board for this very issue. Uh, so this even like goes back three, three years of work, you know, when the ordinance was passed, uh, I think back in 2018, it feels like. Uh, yeah. Perfect. So it's a lot of just that same work. All right, well, let's open up. I don't know if uh, it, does the board have any comments or questions for, for Andrea or any comments about the letter or any ideas on whether we should take any action? Don? Yeah, my perception is that this pretty much changes the status quo. It puts caps on certain things. And I defer to Andrea if I'm wrong on that. I had uh, occasion uh, to shelter in place at Thanksgiving in uh, Anaheim. And they have a much uh, better and severe uh, controls. You cannot park on the street if you're in a short term. You cannot even unload or load on the street. You have to be in the driveway. Your car is maintained on, on the driveway. They have curfews uh, and uh, curfew beginning at eight or nine in the morning and, and at 10 o'clock, uh, no loud music outside at any time. Uh, if you have a high heated pool, it goes off at 10 o'clock and won't even uh, be, the heater won't even come on until like nine in the morning. Um, and it seems to be uh, much more conducive to good feelings with the neighbors. I, I don't see that in this, in this uh, ordinance. Okay, um, any, other, any other comments or thoughts? Cor uh, Corla? Yeah, I, this board has been reluctant to take any kind of action on SDVRs and I think it's a serious issue and, and, uh, and OB and, and Audrey have done a lot of work on this. And I think her points, if you had a chance to read that letter um, are, are spot on. We are behind the eight ball here because the MOU was signed and all these agreements were made before any of us had a chance to comment and participate in those discussions. So we're trying to play catch up. And this group has done their homework and research and come up with some plans to help mitigate the damage that this is going to do to our neighborhood. I mean, it's already doing it, you know, so uh, I, I myself would like to see us get behind this letter. Uh, if the board won't take action as a group and get behind this letter, I personally will send in my uh, uh, support for these mitigation measures. Okay. Uh, Margaret? I would like to make a motion to support the letter. OB, we need Midway. We can't function without those two neighbor, neighboring neighborhoods. This is a cry for help. I mean, we're dealing with it too. Social media, probably 70% of my time religiously on all the different groups. And I see this a huge issue 
in all of our close neighborhoods on the peninsula. OB is actually doing something about it. And I commend them for that. And I think that as a neighboring community, it's happening in our own community too. We're just not talking about it. I get tons of emails. I just don't know what to do with them. And uh, yeah, so I, I feel like I wanna make a motion that we support this letter and uh, you know, it'll, it'll, it's just taking a stance by supporting our, our neighbors and, and a big, huge issue that we're all facing. We don't need any more noise. We don't need any more commotion in our, in our hidden gem of a community, which is Point Loma OB Midway. So I make a motion to accept uh, support in the letter on behalf of the Peninsula Community Planning Board. I, I second, second motion. I, I second. That was Jim. Yes, I'd like okay. to. I'd like to. Con I'd like to comment on that section, the seconding as well. Sure. Um, I I, I want to share the compliments that uh, Fred that you you had for the letter. Um, it is a very positive letter in in terms of laying forth specific issues. There are a couple of the suggestions in the numbered paragraphs that are extraordinarily insightful, and and uh, I appreciate the spirit in which this is offered, as opposed to simply saying no, we don't want them. Th these are sp specific, constructive comments made in response to the proposal that's on the table and before the council. This is, in my estimation, the kind of letter that actually gains traction and actually does benefit the community. So I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted to support it. I agree, Jim. And, and I would state again, I, I've sat in on these meetings and the board has done their due diligence with being very thorough. Um, I especially like the, the space, um, the amount of distance in between the, the platforms. I thought that was very, um, a very key uh, tool as far as enforcement goes. But um, again, I, I worry, the only thing I worry about with this is again, where is that gonna sit when we're wanting to get enforcement? You know, we're, we're not having a great um, response from our, our enforcement right now with current uh, issues. The issue that I have is, you know, going forward, uh, the city properly enforcing these platforms. But I do think, again, giving the city better guidance and these, um, these points that you've made are much better than what we've been offered by our council member. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I think that, you know, certainly the letter talks about enforcement. And so I think that that, that issue is definitely addressed as an important issue. Mark, do you have a question? Yeah, no, I just want to say that when I read through uh, the points that it made too, these were new ones to me as well. And I thought they were quite ingenious on what they were talking and how they were describing what penalties, what uh, disadvantages, what benefits, um, and so I was in favor of it. The only difference I saw was in the OB uh, planning area, they must have a lot of RM 4-5s um, because I would say our number is an RM 3-7 zone um, that we want them to be restricted from or create the distances between. So that would be the only comment I'd make. They're a little, our, our communities are a little bit different that way. So, but I, I, felt, it was a, I felt it was a good letter. I really did, and I would support it. Uh, Brad? Yeah, I agree. I, I was very impressed by the letter. I was just like, <laughs> I can't imagine how long it took to get that together to get everybody to agree on it. But uh, no, I was uh, a lot of foresight. Uh, I think that the point made about enforcement, I mean, that's why we're where we're at, right? Is that there are existing code Violate. I mean, the, the code's been violated for years. They didn't enforce it to begin with. So now they put them on the back, you know, on their back foot in terms of being sued by these, you know, Verbo and Airbnb that they just basically let these things go for years and years and years. And now we're backpedaling. But anyway, yeah, I would be totally in support of it. It was a great letter. And uh, um, both Andrea and Tracy, you guys should be commended. You did a great job. And I guess, Mandy, you were there too. Yeah. No, no, I think Kevin wrote the letter. Did Kevin? Uh, yeah. Kevin Hayes. Well, the points, yeah, most of the points came from just our subcommittee. Uh, and I will say that a lot of these points were actually presented to our council office before the ordinance came out, uh, specifically the cap by district, specifically the distance requirement. Uh, and they were, you know, subsequently not included in the ordinance. But that doesn't mean we still can't fight for them. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. And I like, I do like the concept that, you know, that the, the 
you know, the rental platform should be accountable for, for what they do, right? Yeah. They, they, they get the benefits, they should take the burden. Yeah, and they also have recently lost lawsuits because uh, other cities such as San Francisco do hold them accountable now, and they recently lost lawsuits uh, suing them. So I, I don't, I don't foresee them not suing San Diego, regardless of how this ordinance pans out, because we are one of their biggest markets. It's just kind of how we're going to have to settle the issue, but and that shouldn't make us back down from getting something on the books. All right. Is there any other further discussion? Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion by Margaret, second by Jim, to approve. Uh, I guess it would be a short letter that I would prepare saying that we, we support the uh, letter by Ocean Beach on this issue. Good. good. I got to get that done and get it in quickly. So um, all those in favor uh, of that motion, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don, I can't see your hand. Are you? I'm okay? not a yes. I'm a no. You're no. Okay. Seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses. And all those against? One. Okay. Did I miss somebody? Or did somebody drop off? Maybe somebody dropped off. One, uh, three, four, Robert seven. dropped off. I think Robert Tripp Jackson is no okay. longer on either. All right. Seven. It passes seven to one. So. Okay, awesome. Um, I would just thank you guys. I would just recommend, yeah, uh, sending that out to everyone and then also just popping it also into the comment section. I plan on sending in my comments and then also calling in my comments. So if everyone has the time to do that, that would be super helpful too. But if not, just write the comments in. Thank you guys so much. Perfect. Thank, thank you, you, Andrea. Thank you. All right, Mandy. Oh. Yeah, part wow. All right. And then I have share screen available. Uh, Capabilities, right, Corla? Yes. All right, thank you. Um, last month, uh, Howard Green is here. Uh, last month, we had Tom Mullaney come before the board and present a position um, that the park, uh, the park coalition had made um, regarding the park master plan. And so, Tom has uh, forwarded me some additional information. So, I just wanted to share that with everyone. Give me a minute while I do that. Okay. 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 All right. So I'm just going to share um, the original letter that he had um, sent to the city back in November um, regarding his position, and then we'll um, and I can read it out loud. And then we'll go yeah. forward. I and think so we saw one. the letter at the last meeting. So I oh, think we did. Okay. Thank you. So he, that's why we, uh, that's why we referred it to the uh, parks committee. Yeah. So he did make his presentation and he had some issues regarding uh, the components of the park master plan. One of the main concerns, and it has to do with our community, has to do with the park def deficit. The current requirement is 2.8 acres of park per thousand residents. And that is something that is not being met. And so one of the things that he uh, shared with us, I apologize, and having some issues with my screen, is the deficits for our community. And I know we've got a list here. And if you look closer, we've got the peninsula here with the deficit of 69.97%. And that's concern. Um, we discussed this at the uh, committee level. And the concern that we have is really that our community is built out. And our board in the past has voted um, on uh, the pocket park that Don has been working on, as well as um, the open space that we have within um, our backyard here in Famosa Canyon that the city is wanting to develop. And so we've voted um, in support of the park's position and I modified the letter um, so that we could um, take it back to committee. And so I have it here if you wanna take a moment to, to read that, I'll go ahead and read it out loud. It's addressed to the mayor as well as the city council. I've addressed it to Mike Hansen as well as Andrew Field. And the letter reads, um, the Peninsula Community Planning Board is in support of the Parks and Recreation Coalition, recommendation to the City of San Diego Parks and Recreation, advocating to support the improvements to the Parks Master Plan and Recreation Element recommended by PARC. 
We request that the mayor and the city council direct city staff to work with community planning groups, recreation advisory groups, and PARC for input. The motion to support was approved with a unanimous vote of eight to zero at the last board meeting. Further, the Peninsula Community Planning Board specifically opposes the proposed point rating system for parks. It would prevent Point Loma ever qualifying for new or expanded parks. Worse, it would allow money specifically allocated for Point Loma to be spent in other parts of the city. Point Loma has two proposed parks that can be added relatively inexpensively. We encourage the Parks and Recreation Department and the City Council to pursue adding these parks. One is a pocket park on city-owned land at the end of Avenida de Portugal, which is a Cannon Street Park under the city's working title. This three-quarters acre site has been approved unanimously at every level, including the park board. It has been fully designed and it is ready to go to bid. Two, five acres of open space, which is Famosa Canyon at Famosa and Nimitz Boulevards has been de facto open space slash parkland for the past 40 years. The San Diego Housing Commission is proposing to sell the land for 800,000 to a San Francisco organization then loan back $900,000 of taxpayer money. The community overwhelming it favors keeping the site as open space. The Peninsula Community Planning Board asks that the matter be placed on the agenda or referred to committee. Thank you for your support and time and consideration on this matter. Sincerely, Fred Cosmo. And so I will remove the share screen option and open it up for discussion. Um, I also have Howard here. Um, oh, if you would like to make um, some comments before we, we move it for discussion, please, you can speak. Well, uh, I have no comments. I, I was at the last full board meeting, you may recall, although I was not able to be at the park subcommittee meeting, so. <laughs> Uh, you can report on that, but um, we're just asking for your support. All right. Thank um, you. Actually, um, I, I do have comments, a, a little bit of an update, uh, which okay. does address your letter or, or the, the, the intent of the letter. And that is we have met with city staff yesterday, planning staff. Um, mm -hmm. They have indicated that they would be willing to work with us to you know, review our suggestions. They also said that they are planning to make changes of their own to the plan based on our comments and input from, from other individuals and groups. Um, and uh, I was also happy to hear that they said their intent at this point is that when, after they make changes, which may or may not include our recommendations that they would have that document uh, be reviewed by the public. Uh, you may recall that one of our biggest concerns in the past was that um, they developed this new proposal and then they almost immediately scheduled it for a hearing at planning commission and then city council without taking any public input. So I think their intent is that they will give the public more time and they will go out to more planning groups and hopefully also recreation advisory uh, advisory groups for input. Um, they've actually said that in order for them to do that, they would ask the park group to help them in that effort. Um, so all of that is, is are positive steps. Um, it does show that, that we're all making uh, headway with them. Um, however, I would say that doesn't obviate the need for this letter that you're recommending. Uh, we will be meeting with the mayor next week and any more letters of support that reinforce uh, the basic proposal of to work with, to work with the park group and go back out to planning groups, um, all of that would be helpful. So I just, again, am asking for your support on that. 
Thank you, Howard. Again, I think this is an incredible opportunity for us to let the city know and advocate for more open space within our community. We are pretty much built out. And as we all know, you know, Measure E did pass. We're looking at um, 28,000 additional residents here in the community. And we also know that a lot of community um, outside of the peninsula, they do come and visit our community. They come and visit our parks. We have some beautiful parks in our community, but there are some more opportunities. And I feel like the further we go and, and meeting the housing needs of our city, we need to continue to advocate for um, open space and park space so that we can continue to have um, the quality of life that we have here in the peninsula and also um, ensure that we have ample space and room for everyone to enjoy the great outdoors. So um, those are my thoughts on this letter. I'd like to open it up for further discussion, please. Jim, do you have a question? I have a question for uh, Mr. Greenstein. Yes. Um, sir, have you, um, has your group reviewed the uh, Nexus uh, study that was conducted in July that backs up the point system? We did. Our group has looked at that. And I've looked at it personally, but it, it has been a little while. So I'm not. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, it, 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 it appears as though that when the, the, the master plan was conceived and the point system came forward, that they went ahead and commissioned a nexus study so that they would be able to implement a fee structure almost instantly upon the adoption of the master plan is it, it and 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 there's there's an investment made in that study and in in making sure that the fee issue can be addressed uh, legally and 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 I just wondered if you if your group had specific objections uh, other than the fact that they're basing it on the point system which of course you have objections to um, it, with their analysis there because it also actually included as an example the canyon street pocket park as one of the as one of the example projects um that would be funded and 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 how it would be accounted for in the point system okay we have well we have other issues uh and i wouldn't even characterize them as objections yet until we get more answers one okay of, one of the the key questions we have is how did they arrive at some of their assumptions? Okay. Um, for instance, the, the one particular one that, that gives us a lot of heartburn is that I think they used four metrics to determine what the um, per unit fee or development impact fee would be. Um, and one of those metrics is land cost. Um, I think the other is um, maintenance and operation. Another is, is development cost. And then maybe the fourth would be um, uh, overhead and, and the cost of plan preparation. Our biggest concern was that they said after they've taken all their data and information, they discounted the land cost by 60%. <laughs> okay. And so, you know, our, you know, that sounds crazy to us, but, you know, our, our first approach is, well, why? You know, what, what is the basis for discounting at 60%? Why discount it at all? And why that number? So, okay. So, Again, this is one of the reasons we want to meet. We have, um, you know, we have a lot of questions for them and we can't really say we agree or disagree with some of these until we really have some answers. Okay, thanks. Thanks. And, and then for the purpose of our board speaking to all of you now, um, the, 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 at 2.8 acres per thousand, we're about a thousand acres behind schedule already. And by 2050, we're going to be probably another 1,100 acres behind schedule citywide because we're only counting as population-based parks, neighborhood parks, and community parks. So we're not included in there. But but if you when you understand that Balboa Park is about 1,200 acres, we're 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 already a Balboa Heart Park behind schedule, and we're looking at being two Balboa Parks behind schedule uh, going forward. And if we're undervaluing land cost, I don't know how we get there. If we don't include actual 
taxation and payments against that in addition to whatever developers and and I, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying we shouldn't have that conversation I think we probably should that that um, you know, I live in a house I'm not contributing my fair share because we've lived here since 1989 and I don't pay anything in payment <laughs> in comparison to taxes as most of you but but there there needs to be some commitment if we want 2.8 acres there needs to be some commitment to not just burden that on 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 projects as well we should but also burden ourselves because if that's an aspiration we want that's something we may be looking at uh at the end of this process thanks lucky yeah i i i think it's a very valid aspiration but uh i, I think the fact of the matter is there's not land to to realize those parks that the city uh, unless you're talking about some uh, outlying uh, communities that border out into uh, to the hinterlands or something. Uh, an acre is uh, roughly a, a little less than the size of a football field. So I, th I think what parks will try and do is they will try and come up with a way where they can recalculate or come up with a, a different uh, model or metric that will uh, get them out from underneath the, uh, the the drum beat. They hate hearing all the time. There's not enough parks. Enough parks. They get that constantly. Yeah. I, I think they'll try and change the rules of the game to the point that uh, that they'll be able to uh, uh, justify not creating much more in the way of park space because uh, uh, the, the the park space is just simply not there. And asking them, you can't get blood out of a turnip kind of thing. They can only do so much. But I I, I don't see. Uh, what we're asking is doable for them unless unless there's some way to well i i think keeping the leverage is a good thing frankly <laughs> we when we go into development negotiations on big projects and everything having this acreage uh, as a leverage point is a good thing so so you know the, uh, but but I, that's exactly what they're doing lucky is exactly is is calculating another means of of delivering benefit, and you can either agree with it or disagree with it. The PRC yeah, and, people and disagree. We all know with it. fees aren't going to get us there. So yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I've okay. taken too much time. Any other comments on the uh, proposed letter, uh, Corla? Yeah, um, the home point system's above my pay grade, but um, I do know that uh, almost everybody at CPC is completely against that point system. CPC has come out strongly since this kind of started with the park committee and all that um, against this parks master plan and they're on record with letter uh, opposing that and opposing that point system. Uh, I, I will also say that last time we did not vote to support the PARC information because we didn't know where they stood and uh, it, it wasn't specific enough and, and that kind of thing. And I think uh, Mandy's letter uh, goes to the point in her first paragraph that we support looking into things and being on board with this. And, and I, I kind of think it's a good letter. So I, I think I would be willing to support uh, that letter in, in support of the uh, points made there. Just out of curiosity, uh, Mandy, do you think anybody wants to make a motion here? I will. Okay. I'd like to make a motion. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a motion. And then Don seconds. Um, do we go for the vote now or do we, any other comments or? Would you state the motion please? Yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the letter of support for PARC that was presented to the board. Okay, and who was the second? Don. Don. Was. Don is the second, okay. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, seven, seven. Don, yeah. wait a minute. One, two, three, four. No, everyone raised. Six, seven. I count eight. Eight to nothing. Eight to nothing. Unanimous. Oh, thank you. I, do, I really do appreciate uh, this uh, vote. Thank you very much. And thank you, Mandy, for your hard work. Good job. We appreciate it too. Thank you. And we hope to be able to work with all the communities to, to get the best uh, Parks Master Plan that we can. Yeah. Thanks again. And yeah. Howard, I'll be sure to get Tom the signed letter once once Fred signs it. So thank you for your um, consideration tonight, everyone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.
Perfect. Thank you, Howard. All right. That's been a big agenda. We've done a great job. So the last thing we have is uh, subcommittee reports. If anybody wants to report on their subcommittees, I'm just going to make a quick report on the airport, which is that the part 150 study is coming to an end. And so the, the official draft 150 a noise report is going to be issued in March or April. It's coming up. We just had an ANAC meeting last night on it. And um, DK, uh, the person from Midway, she, she's very active and seems to be very engaged. So she's a really good person. So uh, yeah, so that's good. And so, um, so we'll bring those things to a head and, uh, and, and so I'll keep you posted on that. And then, so I don't know if, if any, any other groups or, or committees want to make a report, uh, just raise your hand, let me know. Mark? Um, not on project review, but on slating and our pro and our election coming up. Um, we went, talked about Jim Harris' letter earlier, our email from 2020. Um, we've never taken a position on slating or, um, you know, making comments through social media from this group and we can but we never have and all we've ever done was ask everybody to kind of be kind and don't don't go out negative slamming people during the election period but you know you create your slates and put them out there and and get people that want to serve on this committee and, and on this board um, and don't do it through negativity. So whenever I see negativity, it always reminds me of stuff we've seen in the past and it never came out good. So let's just try to keep it a good election. It's going to be challenging, but let's get 11 people on this board that want to serve. You know. Thank you, Mark. Brad, you got a comment? Yeah, just an observation. Uh, <clears throat> Margaret kind of touched on it at our last project review meeting in that Mark is, Mark is done. Mark is done a wonderful job for way too many years but we don't I mean the project review in my limited time there I mean it's it's very specific and we need somebody who potentially will be uh, knowledgeable enough to be able to step into his shoes so just wanted to make that observation that um, and it's going to be some big shoes that somebody has to fill but just letting everybody know that uh, his marks, unfortunately, his time is up, and that's going to be a big vacancy. I strongly agree with that comment. And Mark, you've done a great job. Greatly appreciate it. Unbelievable. Yeah, you should see the questions that people send me, and I say, "Oh, forward it to Mark." <laughs> well, you have no idea. I mean, these meetings. I mean, we've had three and a half hour meetings before, so. Uh, and you know, these packets that I pick up, I just pick them up, right. And take them to Mark's house and, you know, just stacks of just plan sets and, and to be able to keep it all in order. And um, I mean, I can't imagine how many thousand hours he's spent doing this stuff. So it, it's unbelievable. Plus he's a great educator. He, he teaches us all a lot. He's yeah, an amazing chair for this this committee and, a, and an asset to this board. Right, right. For Margaret, do you have a comment? Yeah, no, I want to echo Brad's comment because I'm the first to admit that I came in guns blazing my first year saying, why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? We're a planning board. Like we're supposed to be for the people. But after multiple years on being this on this board, I just this year have been sitting in on almost all the different committee meetings, just to learn the big picture. And the project review committee is most important. It's developments coming through the pipelines. Jim harps on this all the time. You know, we have to, you know, know the planning department and the guidelines of it all. And as a new board, I would encourage you that that are running to really, really try to get into some of these meetings and, and really learn the big picture of the planning board because the mediators, the artery of this planning board are in project review. And there is so much that Mark knows that helps us like save time and space and energy. Um, and you're always happy to, you know, kind of teach us too, Mark. So I appreciate that. But learning the ropes of, of pro project review is... I'm just a beast in a So thank you, Mark. Yep. <laughs>
And I do want to say thank you, Mark, again for your service. I do appreciate all the contributions. You know, we are a volunteer board and, you know, we're here again, it's pushing nine o'clock and the time and the consideration and the effort and energy that goes into these meetings is, is noted and very appreciated. Thank you, Mark. All right. Uh, any other board comments? All right. We're going we're gonna to get in before nine o'clock, Mandy. We got 15 minutes to spare. <laughs> Time for dinner. <laughs> Time for dinner, exactly, and a glass of wine. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. We really, we did, we got a lot accomplished. We got a lot accomplished. Great job. All right. Adios. Are, if you'll call the end of the meeting, I'll stop recording. I'm calling the end of the meeting. We're done. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank Great you, everyone. Job. Bye.